Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'll call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, November 18th to order. The time is now just a little past 7 p.m. Uh, there are masks and hand sanitizers at the front of the room for anyone who is interested. Anyone wishing to address the board and make a public comment, the microphone in the front of the room, please be sure to, to come to the front, clearly state your name, your address, and speak towards the microphone. Um, the first thing that we need to do before we open up the floor for public comment is to go through the minutes. Uh, we need to approve the minutes for October 20. Oh yeah, sorry, I've got ahead of myself. Uh, everyone please rise for the pledge. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Okay. First item is to approve the minutes for the October 23rd workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay, I did not see the minutes for the 28th. They're not done yet, correct? Yeah, everything's done. Everything's done? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I am i didn't get a chance to read over them because okay, I didn't well, see them. So, I know. I, 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 I didn't get to see it. Okay. Um, everything's done. Okay. So, uh, Jim and Irene, did you two? Okay. So, uh, since I've not read it, I'll ask that one of you if you actually if you want to approve the minutes. Otherwise, we'll table. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the October 28th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meetings. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Same thing with the 13th. I didn't, didn't read those over yet. I didn't read so, oh, the next one? The 13th. So I'd, I'd like I, to make a motion to approve the minutes of the November 13th, 2001 workshop meeting. 2020. 2021. I thought you said 2001. Oh, <laughs> 2021. Okay. I'm only 20 years to go. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Do you have anything for the treasurer's report? Um, I have Rick down here to help me sort some uh, more stuff with uh, QuickBooks. Mm. So I, I sent a, a brief email. There's a couple of things I need him to resolve, which came up as a result of last year's audit and prior problems. So it's a accounting issue that he said he could do that. He doesn't have to sit here and take care of. The only thing is um, it may take him a bit more time. I, I said, is it going to take you about 10 hours? He's like, no. I said, you know, three or four. He goes, probably one or two, but um, I guess I just want to ask the board because I think it exceeds what we approved um, his fees were previously. If uh, I could ask, that is an agenda. I don't yeah. know. Okay, but that that then that's about it, really. Earl Helbing came down from the state too, so now we're essentially live with entering our data when it comes to anything in regards to liquid fuels. Other than that, not really much else to report. And forgive me for not preparing the financial no, it's, report. It's, it's okay. I, I, I just got lost it. track of time. I, I covered it. Yeah, it was a lot to do in one day. So, thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Okay, next is to approve the payment of bills for November 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. If you have a comment, please uh, sign in on the sheet and come to the front to clearly speak into the microphone. <clears throat> yeah, come on up, Loretta. <clears throat> Loretta Bauscher, 127 Main Street. We had an incident the other night in town, and I feel we need to report that, and that's why we are here. Oh. We had shotguns, gunshots, okay, fire here in town. And we're all concerned about that. This is a small village, and that should not be. Now, the other incident that I talked to you once before about, and you said, that it is not occupied, it is. I actually went by one night and saw the generator firsthand. Okay, Crap. can you explain what you're talking about? So yeah. I need to put that in the minutes because I don't know so, what you're talking about. So I'll, I'll give a, a quick recap. There, the, the statement is that there's somebody actively living out of the garage 
behind what used to be the black dog. Okay. Um, there's not a lot of evidence of activity during the day, but at night, to your original point, it's it, it's pretty evident. So we're going to have crafts hopefully go out some evening. It's not their normal schedule of things, but get a, a glimpse of what's happening. Because it's, like I said, during the day, it doesn't look like anything's going on, but at night there's clearly something happening. There were five state police carry out. There is an incident going on here in town that has to be looked into. We're not trying to make it bad for anyone, but there's no. something not right here. Just out of curiosity, uh, you, and you probably don't necessarily know the answer to this, is the general area of the gunshots. Was that in that same area of the? Yes. Okay. Over toward the wireless and the other house down below there. Okay. So I'm assuming the police were called that evening? Yes. Okay. And about what time did that occur? It didn't call me. Okay. And Tolby would have been on for that 60, time? So Tolby would have been it would have been right at the outside edge of them. If it wasn't Tolpy, it would have crossed over into state police, which is okay. probably why state police came out. Okay. I guess my question also is what do you find the home or Loretta, I'm sorry, can you I can't hear you. I'm sorry, but I need to hear you so I can record. I know, I know, I know. The, I think your question was what defines a home. Mm -hmm. um, I I'll turn probably over to like the engineer as like the, the actual textbook yeah, definition of an occupiable are, space. There are definitions in the subdivision and the zoning ordinance. Uh, I can't quote the definition off the top of my head, but um, it it is in the zoning ordinance. Uh, a single family dwelling is defined. Um, uh, single family attached, single family detached. Um, so there's multiple uh, is, types of dwellings that are defined. Yeah. Is, is your concern place. whether or not this, this place has um, is allowed to be occupied as no. a residence? And that, yeah. that would be more of a building code yeah. question. If, if memory if doesn't have public sewer or, or yeah. if he doesn't have water or sewer, then it, it, it can't be occupied. There's no bathroom. Yeah. Well, so it cannot be needs to be involved. So yeah. craft yeah. needs to go over there and shut this thing up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes even the, the alley is blocked and it should not be that way. Yeah, we agree. So, so it will be looked into. It absolutely, absolutely. will be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Now this is this is one that like I said, when you drive by during the day. It's, it looks like a garage, but at night there's stuff going on. So it's, it's one of those yes, things that- I work on daytime. Oh, okay. Well then. Uh, my name is John Showers. I have a local TV show on DC TV called Pennsylvania Pickers. I have a store down at Renner's next week from episode 18. Okay. Uh, on uh, Wednesday night of Christmas over up next to me. Um, you may have noticed there's a $40,000 body sitting in my yard. That's a professional funny car. I'm a professional funny car driver. What I do in that garage is very simple. We repair some of the stuff that we get at auctions or what we resell at the store. I'm not living here. I got a house down in down Denver. And what y'all lost out was simple. I was brought into this community to watch out for uh, my friend in the front when Daryl had the place there and even helped Daryl put the stock car together five times in three weeks and helped Daryl in that place. You know, to be kind of taken across there. Now, I should back up a little bit and explain. Uh, my name is John Showers, as I said. Uh, I lived in Barnstead, New Hampshire, where I was elected to planning and zoning. Uh, and I was on the Lake Street and Planning Commission. That was being run, and I was taught by Peercraft One. Um, when Chris Popper first approached me, which was weeks after we first moved in there, and I was brought in there with the intentions of the restaurant and teach store in the back. Well, I had to take my money and move it down to Rainers, where I got, I'm there for over two years, I have $400,000 in inventory out there. And if you want to come see my house, well, then I sell a party for you. Know, except no alcohol, I don't go for that. The gunshot incident, this gun range over here has been popping off caps for like the last week, all day, every day from the morning on. All right, I'm hearing from other residents. Now I'm gonna hear you read by the right at them. Hey, Laura, you see I'm here tonight. You know, I, I confront people with the truth. Turn you know, and, and I'm very honest about what Turn I do. Okay, why, okay. well, what did it do to you? Oh, you got the turkey Sir, part. sir, okay. sir, we're, so we're, anyway, what I'm here for is very simple. I should have probably came to you when I first, you know, was brought into the area. But what's going on here is very simple. I'm entering a sales and purchase agreement on the building. And I rebuilt the inside of the building. 
So the thing that is, what was there, it's a historical building. I'm also on the Burke Sister team here, Burke Sister Center. My relative was John Frank and Michelle who was born in the log tender's house over here, right near that gun club. And the one question I have tonight, which Laura did bring up, is this residence over here that's sold, that it looks like the field is like being carved up for like, uh, a development. I, I mean, what's the status going on with that? The best way to get to get over problems is to sit down as adults and we address these problems. How long have I chosen in my graduate and see what's going on? I have General Patton's son's community from Vietnam. I have a quarter million dollar Vietnam collection. And over here, I've got the information with me that when I did the wall event with my investment at Nuremberg with me and my guys, we received the Community of the Year Award and I received the Educator Choice Award. I'm not some yoga living in a garage. Okay. And you know, and that, that, that's what we need to throw first. Second of all, I have you mentioned this already. Why is a town this size are we paying money third hand? to a company that there is only one of, which is, you know, for according to my, you know, sources and government that, you know, you're supposed to have three sources before you issue out a check to somebody. Well, this town is 600 people. I said this to the two two, three years ago. I said, what I'm going to do with my experience as a planning and zoning member in a failed community where we turned that around using an innovative master plan. I'm like, my, my friends, one thing you're forgetting here is, I know government, I know this job you're doing and I cringe for it. I want to be part of that again in my time. But at this point, why are you there during daytime? I work for Guardian Preservation. I just store readiness. I got like three other companies I'm trying to keep going after a scam demo from last year. It ain't been easy. You know, and all I try to do is put my money into it and buy the place off my buddy. You know, to have, to have heard what I said. You know, somebody told uh, this is from Corporal Schaefer. Okay, I tried to get him to come here tonight because he's buddies with one of the guys in my military group, but he couldn't make it. Corporal Schaefer stated, Unanimous phone call that guns were shooting at people at 5 p.m. Well, what about that, that gun that gun place? They got alcohol mixed in while that. Guns and alcohol don't go at all. You know, and I'm not over there shooting any guns. I don't even have any guns over there. You know why? Because I was afraid of being stolen. Last night somebody loosens the lug nuts in my van. You know, I had one generator attempt to be stolen last, last winter. Why? Because I'm trying to get solar in the thing. I don't like to sell back to my head. I'm going to give it to my neighbors, Patty and her husband, because I broke them in the city. You know, and they're at 112, 114. Uh, Jim, the Vietnam vet, he's supportive of my museum. You know, and what I try to do with my collection is simple. Being part of First Chapter 131, uh, I was asked to move my whole collection to South Carolina. They were going to give me one time grant of $150,000. My stepfather was from Reading and killed a Vietnam when I was six years of age. I'm a local boy. And Jim Kepler was my idol when I raced the Grand Fairgrounds so those last two years. I bought one of Tobias' cars after he got killed in front of me. And that man, he never charged me to teach me how to tune a big block or to do point to dual point to straighters. You know, and now I just mentioned this to Mary Ann Kepler, you know, when she's supposed to be with uh, Mary Adam up there at Tobias' shop. My buddy out in Indiana has had this Tobias chassis pin on, rusting in his yard for like 20 years. And he said, Look, I'll give it to you if you guys want to put together another replica car. I talked to her about doing something in the community, like similar to what we did in Nuremberg, in tight with the car show. If we have a car, I mean, that guy's a town hero, man. You guys can't, can't deny that. That was missing consistency. You know, and so, you know, he's gone from us. What we got to ask ourselves is, do we want this to be a national historic district that was supposed to be in 1985? Of which, no one's really curious. When we got that same status when I was on the board in New Hampshire, um, and I was part of the process, it was great. To learn how to do a master plan for community and make it be successful, which you have to have in place. Every community has to. So you're liking that. This man, when you find money, 250 bucks, or throwing people thousand dollar day violation, that's not how you win. That's not how you win hearts and minds in community. What you do is you work with the community. But I have Chris Poppett on Facebook Live, where he admitted that he owned that company. I worked for his cousin. You know, it's says, oh, I don't to keep on, but hey, Chris is a, a, a good guy. I find out that when I pulled up last weekend, he never owned the company. Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean he never owned the company? He told me he owned the company. I'm never on Facebook Live. He even told me he wouldn't do the job. Well, how about this, guys? Why don't we let me and Ray talk to the other neighbors? And Jim said, well, what do you dice, man? This guy told me a, bit, a world of knowledge about the, the Indian artifacts we're finding in the area. Except for the for our value, when you get me a discount, but when show me where to find points. You know, but I've been finding an actual site that I'm going to create. The thing of it is, I love the history of this town, and I'm part of this. Okay. Well. I'm here by choice, not by accident of birth, guys. Well. And I feel that what we should do is, first of all, we have to do this the same way that I've studied my laws. 
you know, for Penn State and you know, being friends with Mark, Mark the um, Joe Gillian and started the first system museum, that kind of helps me. I think that what we have to do for master plan is we need to get something put together to have it on the ballot map. Okay, so that can be presented to the voter for them to approve. Now, for those of you who don't know what master plan is, I'm sure you do, because Chris agreed with yes, we don't have a master plan in the year. If we're challenging court, we're not going to win because we don't have a master so, plan. Can I, so why don't we create a committee to do that? Can I can I intercede here for a second? Um, if we need to look at a master plan or getting a master plan together, we can certainly do that. We can put that if you'd be interested in coming to the next workshop. I want to be part of this. I guess I need to come to these meetings. Now, my TV show is still on the third Thursday of every month. So I couldn't get here for the meetings. Yeah. So I had to switch to Wednesday. And John for Dean is fine. We're, we're doing episode 18 next week. That's number one local rate show. And I'm, I'm not getting money on the American thing because the heart of a volunteer is the strongest heart you're ever going to find. And if BCTV, if you want to look it up on YouTube, You'll see I did 17 episodes, watch a couple, come watch the one Sunday. I am not hiding anything on my own okay. book. And the, it, you don't have anything to worry about then. The, but the worst the thing that's... The thing I'm getting at is, why don't we create a committee of residents that, again, I have so many people, where I said she wanted to, at least I need to be part of it, I'm going to, where we save the town the money that's being paid third hand to a company that's the only entity in a town of around 600 people. And, and we know what we want our community to like. So let me let me stop you there. The reason that we go with a third party is so that it is an unbiased, unpartial administration of codes and the regulations that but go into it. There's still a protocol to be followed that there's not three bids being given. That's if you're purchasing so, things, not services. Yeah, so that's that's very specific. There for um, code enforcement, solicitor for engineer, you don't that's not what applies. Well, you know what I loved about doing the job up there? We're volunteer government in New Hampshire. We got paid no money. Well, and that but, takes the greed out of everything. So, well, for, we're volunteer with no so money for, okay. for what it's so worth, we don't. That's not what's. So, it would be pure craft that, or craft lines, excuse me. That's, that's actually. Well, it's, it's so, not craft times, it's just craft codes. It's, it's yeah. craft codes. Craft yeah. codes. I can use the family up there. They plan it and did Boston. So, in Pennsylvania, there's a code enforcement officer for each municipality unless they have their own department, which is usually only in large cities. That's correct. Um, and so there are certain licenses that need to be part of that. And so that is, it involves understanding the international property maintenance code. That's why. Yeah, that's why I was up there. I was a building inspector. Okay. But here they have to either hire their own code, code enforcement person or they, they contract with somebody. Most municipalities of this size utilize somebody like Crash Coast. They're the only ones. Actually, there's other there's there engineering. Are, there are other engineers. The same service. Yeah. I mean, when I saw that there are like 20 counties, I'm like, wow. Well, they got to start a company like that. There's, ac there's actually, I mean, I represent, my office represents quite a few municipalities. I think we're at like 20 now. I can tell you they're not the only ones. But I'm not the only ones. Agree, but there's for community this small, we have the same general interest. We want to keep the large developments out to preserve the National Story District. That would be well, and I think and you'll, I think I, you'll I'm find. I'm just gonna say that's what the purpose of the zoning ordinance and the zoning map are. That's the purpose yeah. of that. That is so, just. So yeah. what's the national storage issue going for? Now up there, our residents got 20 percent tax reduction every year um, on but, their tax bill. They, if they did any renovations, it's going to retain the same main so, structure. There is so, a sort of component of it. Let's rather rather than going down the rabbit hole on a, on a number of things, John, I'd like you to come back to the next workshop meeting right. with a, a bullet point list, and let's rather than yeah, using I mean, the opportunity that, tonight, you know, between now and the holidays, you know, we can get the sign, but yeah. well, we have enough time to get this on the ballot. And with that master plan in effect, that's going to look this like, you know what I mean? Like well, we have, we already have a joint comprehensive plan. It's a, it's a joint municipal comprehensive plan, and it out it outlines all of the growth districts in 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 five or six municipalities. The adjacent uh, ones. And then from that, there is a joint zoning ordinance that was developed. And again, those those um, those uh, municipalities that participated in that joint comprehensive plan also have are participating in a joint zoning ordinance. Which we just recently right. adopted. We recently adopted that. Was but in talking with Jim Crowley, I didn't even talk to Walter Scott, Scott, even the town of Ray, because I was there for a while. Scott, right? And I said, Look, I'm not lying to say I live in Ray, because I don't want to live in Ray ever again. You know, I grew up in that, and that was enough. You know, I went off, got an education, made some life, and I don't want to get back in that gun range. You know, and as far as my weapons, my, my Vietnam stuff is 100% legal. 
I took my racing line and started a museum collection. That's one of the largest in the East Coast. You know, I wanted to put that here, you know, because I'm from Burst County and, you know, I, I was going to let all the motorcycles that keep down the ground around every week, every year, excuse me, because my stepfather was still in 68 years now. Married to my mother, too. Good. So, again. So, so, again, you didn't know who I was. Now you know who I was. You know what's going over there because I'm here. Okay. We, like, here to come. We, we, appreciate, time, we appreciate the interest and, and the comments. I had Harrisburg and two other places today, and they go home and take a shower, man. It's tough. Yeah. Like I so said, we appreciate so you, the interest and the comments. The old restaurant. No, no. I'm in a sales and purchase agreement uh, with Jeff, um, which I knew because he was my boss at Dempsey's back in the day. I knew him and Terry, the, the other partner was in there. He wants to tell me how to cook. <laughs> then I was manager at the Berkshire Mall after that. They came out of Florida made a bunch of money. I hooked him up up in North Beach when I was doing movie studio. So course. why is the generator on at night? Because my dad won't throw me a drop. That's all I want is, you know, and I, I'm willing to comply with the 100 amp service that is, is inspected, standardized, the whole deal, because it'll run my air compressor. You know, I had one generator, somebody attempted to steal. The cop that came out said, you know what, see two doors open and generator run, I'm liable to take it too. What kind of world we live in? You know, tonight I come back to find some kind of cord generator. Why? Because I was going three quarters a day. Guess what I did this morning? I spent five hours telling the scrap metal that was supposed to be recyclable that other people were going to pick up that they never did. And then it got wet this summer. And you know what? I don't want that there when it snows. I don't want to be known as like, you know, the scumbag at the end of town that looks like a junkyard. You know, I'm running a professional funding corporation and I'm under contract to do eight races in 2022 for the funding car chaos service or funding car chaos service. That's ten thousand dollars to show up in a race. I'm already behind eight ball. Why? Because I'm spending my time doing foolish things every single time that's taking me away from what I'm supposed to do, like taking the cars that are both mine and putting an exhaust system on. That's what I do. That's what Jim did. What did he do with that? He did it in the garage at night. Okay. Did he not? I'm not racing engines. By the way, that must have a national event. Oh. So I'll come back next yes, time. Yes, please with come back. Come back with in the, the list. Meantime, you know where we're at with this one. You know what? Let's make stats for a better place for future people. No, Thank let's you. make this natural for it to support. Thank you. I'm embracing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Miss in the back. The answer is 116 degree. We're talking about the same thing. Okay. My name's Kendra King. I'm at 123 Main. Is that Kendra King? Yes. K I N G. 122 Main. That's correct. Thank you. My name is Bob Archer. I live at 127 Main Street for more 42 years. And I heard a lot of bull crap just a bit ago. Yeah. I'm I'll sign my name and then I will give my opinion. And in my opinion, consider this the whole block and other people in the town. The other night we heard, I thought, <laughs> I thought it was my husband locked out and banging on the door. It was bang, 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 bang. It rattled my house. I thought it was my husband. But my, all my neighbors in that same area heard the exact same thing and thought someone was banging on their house. It wasn't. It was gunshots that John shot. <laughs> that he admitted to shooting to the police that came because the police called me back. I have an incident report number. He admits to living at the garage. He admits that he has a, a, a firearm that he shot. He claims into the ground, which there's all kinds of wiring back there and it's on the Weiler property, which is, this is a village. I've lived in big cities, Seattle, Honolulu, Korea. I've never had a gun shot that close to my house before. It terrified me, I'm afraid. For my safety, I'm afraid for the little children who get off a school bus a half a block up from that barn. And he's lying to everyone here. He's lying to all of you people here. It's not safe if you're going to stand up in front of the community and say, oh, it's the gun range. He tried to say, like, oh, it's not a big deal to the cops. The troopers were, were not having any of it. They told me that it was... They told him he can't be shooting in the village. And he tried to poo-poo it and say, well, there's a gun range over here. And, and they told him, you need to go to the gun range or go up in the middle of the woods and shoot out there if you're going to shoot. But you can't be shooting in the village where there are people, there are children, there are kids. You can't do this. This is illegal. So they gave me an incident number. Um, I provided it to the rest of the neighbors on my block who were also terrified out of their minds upon hearing 
six loud gunshots. And I'm not talking like a 22 or a Glock. I own those. This is like Desert Eagle 357 Magnum sounding gunfire. When it sounds like your house is someone's beating on the front door, that's not a small firearm. That's large. He wouldn't show it to the police. He claimed that someone came and got him, which we all we all know is crap. We can see his house from where I live. That generator runs all the time. It's very loud. We hear it all night into the morning until it runs out of gas and sputters. And he lives there. He had a dog he used to horribly abuse and mistreat. We saw throw it bang into the back of his van, like heard it slam into the wall. He was reported multiple times for that too. This is a safety issue. I, I moved here from Seattle a couple of years ago. I'm from Myerstown, but I moved back to take care of a dying parent. I have never felt so unsafe in my life. And I have lived Tacoma, Seattle, Honolulu, Korea on a base. Like I've lived, all, I've lived in Florida for God's sake. And I never felt as unsafe as I do because that man is shooting off guns at six o'clock at night, scaring the crap out of all of us. And he's very, he's very vindictive. I have texts that he sends to other people that are really ugly, very nasty, um, but happy to provide them. I don't feel safe. And I don't think somebody should be squatting in a garage with no running water, no heat, and clearly is willing to tell lies in front of all these people and to the police. The police kind of cornered him and got him to admit, you know, like, yes, I'm living here. They said, come back. He, he said, come back during the day. I have the statement from the police officer, John. Please shut up. Okay, let's okay. let's say. I sir, have, I sir, have an incident report sir, from the police. Sir, they were quiet I, during your, your public trust, comment, please. I trust the police to tell me the truth, not him, because he clearly doesn't understand what that concept is. I am, because we live so close to him, it's scary. He's threatened my husband before, and now that he has a gun, I'm very fearful for my, my safety, my husband's safety, my neighbor's safety. Like, it's not okay. And that's, I have never come to one of these meetings. I'm not a public speaker. I'm a very shy, introverted person. This is a lot for me to stand up here. Thank, thank you. Did you and get a please, copy of the report? Um, I have the incident number. Uh, yeah, What's Jim, I was going to say before the end of the night, if you want to read it out, if you have it I handy, have otherwise, it, yeah. yeah, let's say it, one, one way. One way. Well, I, th I think she's going to read it out loud. So you're, you're certainly welcome PA to jot it down. 2021-151-7511. And 2021-151. And it's um, State Trooper Schaefer, S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. He said if he said we could tell you that he admitted to living there to leverage that information at this meeting specifically, and that he admitted to having a gun, and he could talk to answer any other questions. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, we take public safety very seriously. So re regardless of what the underlying situation is, we will endeavor to get the facts. And if there are actions that need to be taken, they will be taken to make sure that it's safe. Okay, I'm glad to hear that because what you all just went through is something that sidetracks the situation that we're here about. That place is not be occupied. It doesn't have a bathroom. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have plumbing. It doesn't have electric. And I can contest, I can attest to that because I was, I'm in the fire company for over, almost 40 years and we had rented that building out. We had, we had that building. For many, many years, there is nothing in there. So where does this man go to the bathroom? Well, we have neighbors that have seen where he goes to the bathroom. And it's not in the building. Okay? So that is the, that is what we're after right now. Okay. That needs to be attended to. It doesn't need to be set to the side because it's a situation. Mm -hmm. And it's only getting worse now, no matter what he says. And I have a question for you, sir. Do you know what a DD-214 is? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, no, you do. Yeah, no, we have it. Well, I asked you about help. Do you want me to get you a discount on the service? Okay, well, let's... Gentlemen, gentlemen, I, okay. I, I appreciate your public comment. Okay. This is not going to go good. So you need to respond. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you. I'll have a conversation with Glenn Craft tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. No, no, you don't. No, just need to make sure Toby is aware of it too. Yeah, we'll call him. Well, not right now. We'll call him. We'll call him after. Okay. Okay. Member, members of the audience. John, please. Otherwise, I'll have to ask you politely to leave, sir. John, not the time, please. If you're going to have a conversation, please take it outside. We can okay. call the police if you'd rather us do that. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Well, then shut up. Okay. okay. Are there any other public comments at this time? Yeah. Yes, sir. Sue, so, call them anyway. Uh, my question is, I got a paper here says you... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. Can you state your name and your address, please, for the Richard record? Richard Board, 3677 Schmaltz Road. Okay. Easy. Thank you. Thank you. One more story. Yeah, I got it. I got it. <laughs> anyway, I got this letter says that you're going to come out and do an inspection on my septic system. I have a few questions. One, if you want to do an inspection on my septic system, why do I have to pay for it? If you want to inspect it, why don't you pay for it? Well, because to put it lightly, it's a state mandate as part of the Act 537, whether you do on lot, sewer, any mix, any any on lot systems, sand mounds, septic systems, et cetera, have to be inspected generally at somewhere around the neighborhood of a four year interval. There's a cost for everything. So if there's a mandated thing that has to happen on properties, somebody's paying for it, whether it's you as the property owner or the taxpayers as a whole. The most fair way to do this is it's no different than when you take to get your car inspected. The state requires that you inspect it annually. You have to pay to inspect it. Your septic system is no different. How often am I going to have to get this done? Once every four years. Once every four, four. years. Once every, to get once every yeah. four years. Well, that doesn't make sense because it'll, the paper that I received the, uh, says that... Uh, there's three zones. Yep, there are three zones. The first, three zones. the so, first time the pump outs happen, it, we're trying not to have everybody go all at once because it would be overwhelming for the SEO to try to do the whole township simultaneously if a whole bunch of people hold. So they're they're broken into areas, and you're given two years for that first pump out because most people probably have not had an inspection ever. There's probably systems that have been buried over for decades and decades and decades. So the, the intent was to give people two years in order to kind of get their, their stuff together, get the, the pump out and the inspection done, and then fall into the normal four-year cycle. You're going to have an overlay then because zone one has two years. Mm -hmm. Zone two has three, has two years. Mm -hmm. Zone three has two years. So if I do mine and four years later, zone three and mine mm -hmm. are doing the same time. Yep. There, there's intentionally, it's staggered that it's not like two years, two years, two years. It's two years. The second year overlaps with the next zone's first year. And it just kind of does a step like that. And that's to keep a hopefully consistent, even uh, level of inspections at any one given time. There's not too many, not too few. It's manageable for the, the sewage enforcement officer to actually do the work that we're asking. And we can get this done any time of the year? Any any time that you'd like to set that up, you can call. Uh, well, I mean, usually uh, Peter Peterman calls, but send me a card. Yeah. It says time to pump your tank. Yeah. So I made an appointment. They're coming tomorrow. Well, if, if uh, well, yeah. it doesn't say you could, you could probably, it'd be short notice, but maybe Alan might be able to accommodate that. Otherwise, Alan's phone number is on the letter. You, uh, you can call yep. Alan. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if yeah, you, you call the call SEO, Alan, the you, SEO. You can see if he'd be able to come out for the pump out, but any time of the year, whether it's spring, summer, fall, winter, all you have to do is coordinate the the pump out with the SEO so that he can take well, a look at your tank. It's a short notice to try to call them and tell them to come out tomorrow. Yeah. It, it is, but he might. He might. Yeah. He's, a pre he's a pretty approachable guy. Yeah. Oh, where's he from? I honestly don't know where he's his from, but he's in, in West Reading. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I know they said to me, they said, oh, they're going to call me in the morning, tell me what time they're coming out. I don't yeah. know what time they're calling me. Yeah. And I, can, I, I can just yeah. see this. We'll be there in an hour. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to say. I have no idea. It might be worth asking them to set maybe a slightly better or more definitive time. I know they're kind of like cable TV installers. They say anytime between eight and five, but 
Um, the goal would be to, to get them out the same time that you get the SEO out. And honestly speaking, most people, some people do regularly pump their tank out. You sound like you're one of those people. And it's probably, if I had to guess, like a three or a four year or five year interval. So there's probably not going to be much. You should pump them every other year. You're, yeah, I know. By definition, you're supposed to do it every two years, but most people go a little longer than that. So bottom line is it's, yes, it's an additional thing and nobody likes spending money, myself included, but it is something that is a state mandate. Um, I believe there's, did, did the fact sheet get printed out, Sue? Okay. So if, if you're interested, before you leave, we'll print no, out. It's we, not complete. Oh, it's not complete. Oh, it's not complete. Oh, it's not complete. No, oh. it's not for everyone to for review. I, I sent it back. Oh, but it's not Okay. Finalized. Okay. So yeah. if you're interested, I can, I can connect you with some things that detail some of the specific on-lot stuff around the requirements of Act 537 as it relates to on-lot systems. And it's not something that's just for Marion Township. It's everywhere. If it's yeah. so outside, do every home in Stoutsburg. Every home in Stoutsburg. Every home in Stoutsburg. It's the entire. It's, 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 like going to be built in Stoutsburg. Well, it's the entire state has to comply. It's not just us. Every single municipality has to have an on-lot management system. Everyone has to do this. It's not just us. So. We're going to try. Yeah. That's a lot of sand mounds. Well, yeah. And it's, it's, that's going to be the, the advice and guidance of the SEO on that, whether it's sand mounds, repairs to existing systems, holding tanks. Well, I honestly can't say, oh, yeah. I, I can't, I can't say I'm not an yeah. expert in that field, but there, there are going to be some people that have to do things to their systems. It's no different. <laughs> if you had, like you took your car in for inspection, you might have to fix something. There are going to be people that have absolutely no problems. And like I said, there are going to be people that maybe have a couple of things here and there, but you may have people that have to put in a, an alternative system of some form. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, so every four years, I have to get this done, inspection. Yes. Every four years. And I had to pay $50 for him to inspect. Well, it's $50 on the tax bill every year to cover the cost of every year it's it's $50 every year. It's a total cost of about $200, which covers the, the time the uh, mileage and anything else that goes along with the inspection for the SEO. That's, that's actually probably about the average. I want to say that's, that's possibly on the lower end of the curve for an average yeah. for SEO costs. Let's bring up a good point that we probably should contact the pumpers and let them know that this is now. Well, the problem is like we could con, but it's, you, you could cast a wide net. You might not get all right. of them. Well, so we it's, get, it's, we could get most of them. Well, it's, it's best, to, it's, it's best to have the homeowner yeah. know that when they set it up, they need to set it up with the yeah. SEO as well. Yeah. So what we do then from the, whatever it's on, mm -hmm. is we call up Peterman or whoever, mm -hmm. call up Peterman and say, okay, give me a time when you're going to do this. And then when I get that information, yep. give it to that. Exactly. Yep. Call the SEO and say, I'm, I am such and such at this address. And I'm getting my tank pumped out on this date and this time. I'd like to have my inspection, my routine inspection done for that. And they'll, right. they'll coordinate that with you. And that's an additional $50 on my taxes each year. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, for that extra $50 a year, can I also get some kind of a sign out near my house that slows down some of the traffic? We, I can tell you when she tries to pull out of Woods Drive, it's like you better be quick on your gas pedal because you the way they come up over the hill, somebody's going to get hurt. So let's before before you leave, see me after the meeting. I'll get the exact address. Um, you don't you don't have to pay for the signage. If there's a need for signage, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll make sure that you get that there. Whether a good example, I don't know if you've been to any of the, the recents we had. Well, um, when signage is going to go in and out of their lane, mm -hmm. they're getting to a point where they're, they're putting. Uh, cones up on the road to try to slow these people down so they can pull out with a truck in a way. Yeah, if, if you see things like that, please let us know. Because yeah. we've had people reach out for, uh, we put in a, a driveway ahead sign on one of the, the curves to, to hopefully make people aware that you could have traffic obstructions. Mm -hmm. There was another intersection where we put in um, like a slow and like stop sign ahead signs to warn people because we had a, a situation where people were tending to blow a stop sign. Um, we had a, another resident, uh, I'll say complain loosely, but they, they lodged a concern about safety for tractor trailers turning a direction. We went through and we took care of that by restricting certain truck traffic. So if there's a problem, please let that us know and we'll be happy to help. Tractor trailer trucks from Downwoods Drive and they pull out and these people come up over this hill. And most of them are from out in Tulpehocky Township, out mm -hmm. the SX Teen Challenge Road out there. Okay, so but these people move. 
Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to look into seeing if there's anything that we can do to well, sign it. Driveway that a police car could easily fit in there. <laughs> okay. I don't know if the I don't know if the officer heard that, but um, yeah. okay. <laughs> oh, you could make some money. Let me tell you. But if there's, like I said, anything like that, please let us know. We'd be happy to look into it and everything and anything we can do to help. We will. See if there's an ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. I want to introduce okay, myself. All, I'm sorry. Yeah. You state your name and your address. Nelson record. Troutman, uh, 991 Stoutsburg Road. Thank you. Richland, <laughs> Susie. I don't need to know that. <laughs> I am Nelson Troutman, lifelong dairy farmer in Marion Township. 97 milk bailboard founder and whole milk educator. I also sit, sit on the zoning hearing board. I am here to tell you about our dairy and chicken farm in Marion Township. At the dairy, we are inspected by our milk processor, Lano Lakes, two or three times a year, unless you have a problem. The dairy is inspected by the State Department of Agriculture every other year. We are also inspected by Federal Department of Agri the, the Federal Department of Agriculture. The dairy's water is tested before you ship your first milk and every other year after that. Bell and Evans Chicken in Fredericksburg, Pennsylvania tests the water for the chicken houses. We are a preserved farm in Marion Township, Berks County, PA. We are inspected by the State Preservation Board through the Berks County Board. There, does anybody know how many preserved farms are in Marion Township? It's a pretty good percentage. I think it's about not a percentage. No, I'm trying. I don't remember the There's number. There's 53. Yeah, and it's almost 6,000 acres. The last 20 years or so, a group of 10 around our area pumped our septic systems every three years. Last time I asked a man who pumped the septic if he is a septic inspector, he said, "Yes, I am." So now we get a letter from the township that we need to get our septic inspected. To sum it up, we are inspected by local, state, and federal. Our water is tested by two processors, chicken and dairy. And now we are going to have two septic inspectors looking in our system at the same time at an event I have to coordinate. Our group has been pumping like the rules said, one size does not fit everyone in this township. There's rural and there's village. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just to address possibly one avenue of your concerns there in, in the ordinance, to your point about one size doesn't necessarily fit all. Do you if, think it does? Uh, not. Not in the slightest. So one of the things in the ordinance there is if the, the SEO looks at your system and it is uh, in a fit enough state, thank you. Thank you. And your, your usage would not require a longer interval of thank pump you. out. It does allow up to seven and a half years. But honestly speaking, my understanding of that is you'd have a situation where that's uh, one person with an overly large system where they're just not contributing enough to it to, to actually cause it to be filled enough for a pump out every four years. Well, our dairy and our chicken, Bell and Evans, are going to find a problem with our water long before the sewage enforcement officer. Okay. So to, to address your concern, yeah. the two aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, but this right. isn't necessarily about the drinking water. This is a state mandate that you have to have your, your systems pumped out at a regular interval typically it's about three to four and years uh, and, and that's fine yeah. they also have to be inspected and the way the municipality opted to do that is yes there are some pumpers who are inspect able to inspect they're licensed to do that but the the to remove the possible bias or partiality for a pumper to a client was to have an, a third party involved somebody who is really no vested interest in this other than the fact that they are the designated seo for the township what if I don't agree with that? Unfortunately, it's it's an ordinance. It's effectively law at that point. And not to mention it's the state law that we're trying to comply with. 
It's just to make sure that your system's intact and functioning. That's that's all that is. Well, I have a right. man that pumps right. it and looks at it, right. and he is a sewage right. enforcement right. officer. Well, hold, but, but, hold on. So it's it's right. the same reason if you were to build something, you don't get to go and choose your building inspector. We have McCarthy Engineering for uh, more commercial things or craft codes for residential. You might know somebody who's a licensed building inspector, but that doesn't remove the fact that for the township. This is a little different. It's really not. <clears throat> Yeah, it is. That's that's where I'll respectfully disagree. Because, uh, you know, we had this garbage thing. Yesterday, it, everybody in the township has to do it. Yesterday, I had to drive around my field, my wheat field that I want to, that I planted, I want to combine, had to pick up 20 plastic bags from our neighbors at like, a month, Tuesday morning, the garbage goes, and... Uh, and then that was this time. And we often have to pick up tin cans and plastic bottles going up the road. They throw it in the truck. And I don't know if the, they don't put it in right or what. We have to clean it up. We have to pay for the garbage and we got to clean the garbage up. That's actually one of the other agenda items this evening as we're talking about crash and some of the, the dissatisfaction that we have with the current service and specifically uh, that we're going to put out to request for proposal to see what the options are for a different service. That isn't going to solve it. They all do the same thing. It's at least an effort to try to solve it. Well, if I'm farming and I say, well, I put an effort into it and I, my crop fails, is that an effort? So hold on, let me let me try and understand where, where your your objection here is. Your objection that the trash company is dropping things, or that you have to pick stuff up that blows into your yard? Both. Because I mean, I'll agree. I with, have to pick it I'll, up. I'll agree with you on both counts, but I don't know what we're going to do to remove things that blow we're into just your yard. Changing services and, and going to do it because we've had several of them already, yeah. and they all do the same thing. And this time they had two guys on the truck. Other times they use that arm. Mm -hmm. And then half the time the 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 thing isn't empty. We've had it. We had this uh, the recycling thing come in half full already. And and now they you put recycle out and it goes in the same truck. That's one of the things that we're. That's one of the things we're talking about tonight specifically. Yeah. Well, you're not going to change that. They don't have the people to do it. One thing you're not going to change a thing. One thing there is with those trucks, Nelson, uh, I, I breakfast was 39, uh, he used to work on these trucks all the time for waste management, and he said those trucks have two separate bins, so they can dump the trash, goes in one side, they can pick up recycling, and it goes in the other side, yeah. so, it doesn't get mixed. Some, some trucks do, but one of the concerns we have is we get a report of the tonnage for recycling, and it has been pretty steadily it's declining busy. over the past number yeah. of months. And I don't think it's any well, behavioral difference for people. The COVID, I'm sure that they, they don't have the people. people. Yeah. No, yeah. And they got yeah. one week, they didn't even pick up the trash. They didn't have a driver. Didn't even pick it up. Yeah, anytime that happens, and this comes back into us from a contractual standpoint, trying to, to leverage anything against the well, What the are you supplier. gonna do about it? Well, we have rights under the contract, and you guys reporting this. Means you have rights, they don't have workers. Are they going to give us money back? I don't think so. Well, my office is looking at, into that, but we need when you share those things, that helps me make that argument. What would you like us to do? Go back to Ray West and take our own recycles to the recycling place, get it ourselves. You know, no one was ever asked <laughs> if we want garbage in the township. No one was ever asked. That predates me, but for what it's worth, I kind of agree. Well, I, could I agree. It to you. I agree where we should have a, a garbage collector and recycling because there are going to be people that may be very detail oriented, mm -hmm. like yourself, who do that or, or you, but there's going to be plenty of people that don't. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. with a lot of these things, yeah. it's meant as a safeguard so that you don't have a situation where your next door neighbor isn't throwing their garbage out and it's just piling up in the back where they're not doing recycling, which is whether you agree with recycling or not, whatever, yeah. but, or having it pile up for the same reason that they're not actually disposing of it. It's, it's unfortunate, but it is the reality of living in any sort of area where you're around other people, rural, city, whatever. 
Well, you asked me what I'd want to do with the garbage. Mm -hmm. What I want to do with the sewage is let the guy that pumps me, let him inspect me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, maybe I have to prove that I have to send the bill in here or whatever, but that's what I'd like. Now, I don't. How are we going to get 10 people to get so we get a good price and and have whoever the guy is from Fleetwood get come up here and, and he'll be up here two and a half days. OK, he, it's not just him. He has other people that work for him. He has a company, he has an organization. Well, that's fine. Yeah. But nobody wants to wait till the truck goes, gets empty, comes back, pumps one or two more. He's not going to like that. That's so why can't I just uh, prove that I was inspected by my pumper? I don't need two septic guys looking in my tank because at one time. I don't need that. The problem is the bias aspect of it. So, and I agree with Peter on that. You know, you're paying someone to do the service and that person is there and they're going to want you to continue to use their service. So they're going to tell you what they want to tell you. And, and we were pumping. What? What? This is, I don't get it. This, this is, is not singling you out. This, this is compliance with what the state. The wants state has a lot of a lot of rules. Yes, they and do. And not many of them are followed. Well, we've already received notice from the state. That if we didn't comply with passing that ordinance, we would get fined three hundred dollars a day for yeah. every day that that ordinance wasn't passed. Yeah. Can we do a little research though and find out how the state is dealing with this? I had no idea that you were inspected that often. And a I, lot I, of I tend to, don't. I tend there's, to agree with you. Other farmers sitting yeah. here. So, so Jeff, I tend to agree with you that, that often also. I tend to agree with you that you may not need this. Maybe oh, there's no, an exemption. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Is there an exemption somewhere it's, from the state so, that so we Jim, can investigate so Jim, it, at least? It, it's good that they they test the the water and all sorts of things. It's right. fantastic. It's good quality it's control. Just the septic. It's just the septic. That's the the very thin sliver of what we're talking about here. It's just the it's septic. just that. So the other things are great. It's good that they do that, but it's really Aren't a non sector. So they're not point. inspecting your septic when they're out? You just I thought you said no. they were when the federal guys come, you know where they go first? To the septic. No. They they check your septic system that you have one on the farm. Uh -huh. And then either the first or second place, they go to the wellhead. And if they can pick that lid off, you're in trouble. So, so when you know the federal guys are going to come in the next three months or whatever, you better go tighten that lid. We, we, don't, we don't have to. Our lid is tight. But if you take it off every once in a while and dump chlorine or something like that, you better make sure that thing is tight. Yeah, so Jim, the inspection there, and correct me if I'm wrong, they basically look to make sure that you have one. The inspection that the SEO is doing when it's empty is to make sure that like the baffles and any of the other inner workings, there's no cracks in the tank, that you don't have a situation of, that you may see contamination in the water, you may not, but that it is a, a operable, working, well-maintained system. So the state and federal inspectors are not doing uh, that? I doubt no, it. No. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Can we find out? Well, we don't pump the system when the federal guys are there. That's the problem. Yeah. We that's don't the pump. Issue. We don't pump our <laughs> septic system for the milk inspector or the state guy or the federal guy. So the system has to be pumped in order to be inspected, and and this is the problem. Yeah, it's it's like saying I got my car inspected, okay. so I don't have to do emissions. Like it's it's the same. Th Thing. I don't do emissions. Very, uh, I'm just just <laughs> just using. I never drive I'm, enough. I'm, I'm just yeah. I'm just trying to give a, a I'm real world under example. Five thousand miles. Yeah, just trying to give a real world example. But the point remains: you're still you're inspecting the same thing, but it's two very different inspections. So we they're not that different. We uh, we appreciate the comment, and we will we will take to heart the concerns that you raised. Like how? Like we'll consider it and talk about it, but honestly speaking, I don't know that there's going to be You're much not change. Going to do anything about it. If, if well, there we is, we have to comply with the state. Yeah, if there is something, we'll consider it. But I don't really doubt. I don't really think that there is going to be something that we can do. Lee, yes. Lee Dice, eleven seventeen, going ten four one. Now the question is, who did this? The letter? Yes. The entirety of the board. 
Okay. Your signatures on here, correct? Right? Signatures yeah, so are on there. So it's Jim's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here is the lawsuit from Berks County that you are on for septic systems. Mm -hmm. This is a conflict of interest of you setting this system up and also suing the township for it. So Lee, before you go too far on that, a conflict of interest, and Courtney, if you want to weigh in at any time, please let me know. A conflict of interest would be any situation that benefits me in some way that is different than everybody else. I'm subject to that same pump out ordinance and inspection. I'm no different than you. I'm no different than Irene. I think you have an online system, right? Yep. yep. Um, I'm no different than anybody else in the township in that respect. And I'm. You made the paperwork. You did the paperwork. Yeah, it's part of part of my duty of being on the board. You, you did the paperwork. You also signed everything that went up to Harrisburg. Because I have copies of it. Mm -hmm. Suing the township is a conflict of interest. That's if it's an active suit. Lee. That, that suit's been closed for... It doesn't four. matter. It's still a conflict of interest. I'm not familiar with so he's saying because I was involved with Cage and we sued the township about the, the Act 537 plan, the way it was originally submitted, mm -hmm. that I am precluded from doing anything involving the on-lot systems or the sewer with well, the, the township. Well, the ordinance was passed, was it 2019? Yeah. And that lawsuit was... It was way before that. It was way before that. But it was also passed, I think, unanimously. So even if you add up Celine, I think... I mean, both are, both Jim and Irene included. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 that wasn't, no, that was, that was, that was uh, Peter Wallace. Oh, so it was, yeah. more, it was who else was it? <laughs> Peter Wallace and Franklin Troutman were on the board. And, and he was not. Yeah. I'm sorry, and I'm still getting used to things. He was also, also yeah. on cage. Okay. Cage is still I mean, I'm involved. Thinking, I, okay. The ordinance, the ordinance, is it, it does comply with yeah, what is mandated by Act 537. If it was adopted unanimously, I can't speak to a conflict of interest. In my opinion, there's no conflict of interest. You can object to a, a statute, but you still, as a member of this this governing body, still have to comply with it. And I, I do know that they were being told that they did not adopt this ordinance, that the township was going to be fined $300 a day. And, and this is a mandated ordinance. And cor correct me if I'm wrong, Courtney. I'm, as a board member, I am required unless I have a situation where I must abstain from something, I am required to vote. Yeah, you have very limited instances where you can abstain from a vote when you're serving on uh, as a, a supervisor of a township. And uh, what constitutes a conflict of interest is defined under the Ethics Act, and it's, it's that I wouldn't consider this to be a conflict of interest. Okay, I okay. think we're we'll also judge about it. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Terry Williams. I reside at 126 Main Street. And I know this has brought, been brought to your attention, not the same panel, but in the past about the speeding in town. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand why it has taken this long or anything to be done about it. Um, I have my personal computer right by the, the front window in my house. And I witness all this speeding in the evening, usually 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I'll tell you, if, it, if some of these guys would ever hit a vehicle that's parked, that vehicle would come right through our houses. And I just don't understand why stop signs can't be put in. I think that would be the cheapest way to go. So, And there, there should be at least two stop signs put in town. So I, I, on a personal note, I'm very much inclined to agree with you. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do. However, it is incredibly complicated to legally place a stop sign. Uh, one of the things that is on the agenda is to do a study, a traffic study, because there's a, I think it's like what you have to meet like 
11 out of 15 warrants in order yeah. to place a stop yeah. sign that there are basically we'll call them 15 criteria where you have to meet 11 out of the 15 in order to place a stop sign um we're doing a study on the three major intersections along main street because i completely agree with you whether we get one or two i doubt we'd get three but certainly one would help two would be even better to help break up the traffic flow one of the other things that was mentioned at a prior meeting is uh, they started painting lines i have to call them in again and find out why they they stopped but um repainting the lines along main street so that it's narrower generally whether even if it's just paint you get the visual effect of kind of being in a cattle chute and people tend to drive slower um we got uh, on order some pedestrian crossing signs and they're painting crosswalks in as well which helps visually break up the road and hopefully cuts down on people unintentionally speeding uh along that corridor seeing signs help to break that up even if it's not a stop sign uh, and the other thing that I'm, I'm looking to see if we can get a company to do it or if we can run a piece of equipment is rumble strips uh, as people come off of 422 um, hopefully that will help curtail people from just staying at speed as they exit that and then going into town um, all of those things on their surface seem pretty simple but with the exception of like trying to find somebody to, to run a piece of equipment or pay them to do it they're actually a lot more complex when you when you start to do it stop signs weirdly enough being one of the most complicated things on that list but well i hope something can be done soon because if a child gets hit there's going to be a lawsuit well and, I, at that point i'm not concerned about the lawsuit i'm concerned about the the injury or loss of life but uh, they i do know they come um from the west coming mm -hmm. into town mm -hmm. um they're probably driving 60 miles an hour i would would think and they just drive all the way through town yep. so, you know, just a bit? yes you're absolutely right if you have questions about the stop signs in town here call for township mm -hmm. because they put stop signs on the main street all four blocks yep they would have had to do the same studies well, that were they can tell you what to do if you have we know what to do yeah. yep. call them they can tell you we know what to do we're already proceeding yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 we're aware it's, that this yeah. is a horrible problem in fact i came through the other night and somebody was behind me beeping their horn and flashing their lights at me because i was doing 30 miles an hour yeah you're right it is a, it's a major issue oh. so hopefully we can get these stop signs approved and get them in place and what have we made any progress on that sign that tells people what speed they're going i just i haven't had time down? to come out and poke at it in, in we, entire we honesty hook that thing up as soon as we can and make, can we put up slow slow down signs can we put well, up right? one of the things with the crosswalks i mean we can i have the pedestrian yeah. signs that i have on order oh, okay. at, at people of the audience please so I, either way we have some signs that we're strategically placing to hopefully maybe break that up a little bit but um, craig did, did you want to say something no, no. Uh, oh, okay. Well, um, well, can we get those up? Yeah. Well, they're sooner, sooner than they're that. they're on order. Like okay. they they haven't come in yet. Um, but well, well, thank you for no. your consideration and uh, thank all of you for the time you have spent to the township. Oh, no, thank you. thank you for the comments. Okay. Yes, sir, in the back. Um, one thing I got that that is like very slight, man. These guys are like these kids in these crosswalks. Yep. it's it's expensive to repave i would love i i would yeah i'd love to repave but it's very very costly i'd have to look yeah and say that's yeah i was gonna say i'd have to look but that's he's talking about street light you're talking about street light yeah so as you can see we're actually so close enough to the street light yeah 
Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. Um, and back up and mention the Eagle thing, just to share this with the board. A gentleman that was a friend of mine and a customer at my store worked for Eagle. And one of my workers who uh, was a witness to this dude, two guys quit on Eagle, got out of the truck, and then the truck sat right down in front of the guy's house. That right about the other side. I don't know how to say September. What I understand is that Eagle has been sold. The company that bought them down in Texas is one reason why some of these units are down in I'd have to look and see when they sold it, but we've had we've had people complaining for a while. Right. And uh, honestly you speaking, you're, you're you're gonna have regardless of the trash service. And there's a you know in all these little areas, you know things are not kind of been worked out smoothly. And that was just told to me by the fellow at the um, effort of um, uh, maintenance because he went for eagle and left that to work. It's also a customer at the store, and I was like, hey, what's going on with eagle? And he goes, man. I love that job. He said, man, I can furnish a house in less than a week. He said, the key was the sold place, and that's why I went to the record. So okay. Just to show that. Well, well, thank you. Now, if there's a, a better company, you know, if you need something that's that's, that's not going to be part of the residence and it's going to be beneficial, the one that comes to that, the one that comes to the West, got the, the crap I come down to at, at the uh, recycling place. There. These hands and things I never even had. Yeah, so, no, it's. We, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, it's, it's, it is, a, yeah, thank you. Okay. Seeing no more public comments. Oh, you have one? Okay, thank you. Susie, can you give them that letter that I had brought in to the Senator Argyle? I emailed it to everyone. Okay. I had given that a fundraiser for Senator Argyle and Christine had said there's all, there's grants available to, to fix roads all the time. Yeah. And we go after them. We don't get them very frequently. You go after them or your solicitor? We have the end. He's talking about school roads. Oh, he's talking about he's school roads. He's talking road. about school roads. Uh, and, you know, and, and any, any <laughs> other roads. Yeah. So the, those grants are actually usually processed with engineer. They know yeah. more because they require a lot of information about the specifications of the roads and dimensions. And I am good at math, but I'm not good at that type of math. Yeah, and we, we yeah, do. Yeah, we do. We do Christine request. Told me that. We yeah. do request. Generally, it's generally through McCarthy Engineering. There are some times we fill out grants on our own, but if there's opportunities for grants, we put in for them. Actually, uh, one, yeah, she said, Christine said, if you apply for a grant, don't just apply for one. Tell her. Senator Arnold's office, she can push it. Okay. You don't just apply on your own. You let them know. She said it, it could be 200,000, it could be 500,000. You know, depending what, like she didn't give a, she just sent me back. Mm -hmm. And she's pretty sharp. Okay. But you gotta let her know. Okay. Okay. Seeing no more public comments at this time, we'll move into the items, main items for discussion. The first item is a correction to the September 25th, 2021 workshop meeting minutes. Uh, Irene was actually not listed as being present in one section. Uh, we made a motion at Saturday's workshop meeting to make the, the necessary correction. Um, the Stonecroft infield sinkhole, uh, apparently the basin work is complete. Uh, they're still working on the sinkhole that was there. Uh, Jim, was there any any recent changes with that? It's still working on. I think they have to replace the sidewalk. Okay. Yeah, I've not seen anything official, so your eyes are, are probably the most up-to-date information we get <laughs> on that. Uh, next is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, the project is predominantly in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County, with approximately 1.4 acres in Marion. Uh, we are waiting for Walmersdorf Borough to get the, the traffic study kicked off. Um, I don't think I have anything newer than what we had in our packet from the prior meeting. Yeah, I don't have any updates. Yeah. I've been watching it. Okay. So that's kind of in a holding pattern. We'll, we'll get something at some point, but there's no news on that. Uh, next is the Act 537, which uh, was the subject of a lot of the public comments. Uh, we did send letters out about the 
uh, on lot management ordinance requirements. Uh, Alan Madera, our SEO, will be sending a follow up letter of, about the program in uh, beginning in January. These will probably go out between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, part of the program is to add a $50 pump out inspection fee to the 2022 tax bills and then subsequent tax bills going forward. Uh, the next step around Act 537 is to do an income study, which is uh, as a benefit to uh, understanding the financial feasibility of the proposed projects, as well as um, getting a, a better understanding of um, some of the, the under, underlying elements of financial feasibility for the community at large. Um, Irene, you were starting to put together a fact sheet yeah. and uh, yeah. you sent it out. I sent a revision back, but uh, it's not quite ready for, for showtime, but that, that does help to explain some of the underlying requirements of this program right. as it relates to the state of Pennsylvania. Right. Anything and if anyone add? wants to, you could go on the DEP website. It's right there. If anyone likes to use their computers. So again, it's not us. This is a state mandate. Every single municipality in this entire state has to comply with this. We passed the ordinance in 2019 and we just have to do it whether we like it or not. So. Okay. Next is the spur road and school road intersection. Uh, the asphalt has been laid. Uh, we need to enact an ordinance to put the stop sign in there. And that particular stop sign, there's a, a very special rule as it relates to that sort of stop sign where you can place um, a stop sign on a, um, Craig, keep me honest, is it like a, a, a low volume, like feeder road? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where you don't have to do a, a full study for that, whereas you would have to do for a street like Main Street. Um, Courtney, I believe. I have an emergency have ready. I just need you guys to um, give our office have a motion to approve us by advertising it for okay. you guys to adopt at the uh, December meeting. Um, so I do have copies of that if you guys want to see it in front of you, but we can get it advertised in the next week. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize Kozlov staff to advertise the uh, spur road and school road intersection stop sign ordinance. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next on the agenda is the culvert on Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. Uh, McCarthy Engineering had previously provided a cost estimate of around 91000 for this to replace the culvert largely using our road crew. Uh, the original permit uh, after further review was actually found to not have an expiration date. So we could start construction on that conceivably at any time. However, this was one that we had previously submitted to Berks County Conservation District for funding. And uh, they viewed the, the project very favorably. It just happened to lose out on that particular round. Um, my thought, and we talked about this very minimally on, on Saturday is let's put it in again for bccd yep, at the start of the year yep. we're probably not going to start construction between now and the new year anyway yeah so let's see if we can get funding for it i think that's great okay next up is the culvert on marion drive uh for school road near oscar manbeck uh mccarthy engineering provided a cost estimate of just shy of sixty thousand for this uh again using our road crew for the majority of the work this is awaiting the department of uh, environmental protection gp7 permit uh the culvert on Sheridan Road that was uh, estimated to be somewhere between 90 and 119,000 is in the same state. We're waiting for a GP7 permit approval. Uh, same thing with the culvert on Reichert Road. Uh, the designs are in, but we're waiting for the GP7 permit. Once we have that back, we can start coordinating the times for installation, hopefully in the spring. How long does it take for these permits? It, it, it's the like Depart year. Department yeah. of Environmental Protection permits. Yeah. And Craig, you can you, can, you probably give more detail than that. It seems like they, <laughs> they take forever. They yeah. take forever. Yeah. 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 They yeah. Do. We've been talking about this for months. I yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 it's, it's not unusual for them to take six to nine months. Yeah. Yeah. We've been seeing. Um, so, so I guess just a question for you, Peter, yep. then. I know we talk about this, about getting things like on a routine maintenance type of a thing. Um, I, I don't want to say it's categorized or catalog. Is there mm. any way to kind of go around and, and take a look at what things need priority just to kind of get things on that kind of a yeah, maintenance? Ab absolutely. Yeah. So the, the culverts here yeah. are, I'd say outside of normal maintenance, there's something that yeah. we have to do yeah, because it's but, critically, yeah. it, it, some of these are at the point yeah. of failure, if not failed already. Um, after that, we can fall back into a more normal routine. We did a little bit of oil and chipping this year, uh, but being able to do remedial work for oil and chip yeah. for trying to, to get extra longevity out of certain roads, or if grant funding is available, trying to do 
actual full repaving on certain sections. Like I would love to do an additional section of school road, but that's probably, it's probably going up since the last time we did it. And the last time that was done was $400,000 per mile. So that would be more than our entire budget for the entire year, unless we can get supplementary funding. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I guess I, I don't know, I'm just used to kind of looking at the whole big picture and saying, okay, what needs attention now? Well, what can, can we down the road yeah. maintenance and just move along and maintenance yeah, rather that's, than have to. That's the goal. I mean, that's the yeah. intent is to yeah. get into a posture of going basically, maybe I went clockwise, yeah. counterclockwise, yeah. whatever, um, through the township and doing systematic maintenance so that we don't have yeah. critical failures. Yeah. We're, we're fighting a little bit of an uphill battle here because of just the state of the roads. And yeah. and this this really predates any number of people on the board um, going back decades and decades and decades because my understanding is a lot of the roads were never put down really empirically right to begin with. And it's been just kind of limped along and yeah. limped along and, and limped along. Changed. And, 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 yeah, exactly, exactly. Changed. Yeah. So there, we're going to find more and more things that we're going to be able to, to maybe correctly limp along, but limp along. And then we're going to have to strategically try to fit it into budget and grant funding mm-hmm. to be able to do things like actual repaving. So short answer, yes. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. A quick question. Mm-hmm. Would Main Street be part of like the uh, PennDOT um, liability that's shared with, with the township? No. no, no, it is not. It is. I mean, wasn't that Dalton uh, Highway at one point? It was Highway at some point, but it's been n- municipality road for, uh, <laughs> yeah, as I, as I say, it's been ages. 49 to 50 years. Mm-hmm. No, unfortunately, I think getting, getting them to do stuff is even harder, but. Okay, next, um, Irene, since this is, uh, relates to me, I'll actually, I'll sure. let you. Oh gosh, I can't. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. I have an FMI. It's okay. It's okay. And he's back though, part time. So I actually reach out mm-hmm. to him. He's dead. He's leaving on okay. this item. Okay. So the abandoning of the Judy Cobbins circle, he's more familiar with the dedication agreement of those. So he'll be the one who will be looking at things as well. But I just haven't had time. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not critical in any sense. And this is me okay. commenting as a person, not as a supervisor, that it's since it you had indicated that done. last month, I didn't yeah. stress, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, so do we want to um, I mean you can do it. Way or, uh, it's, it's it's like anything else that we have on there. Sure. I would just leave it on okay. all right. I guess we'll leave it on the agenda. Peter at the prior meetings and at the workshop had discussed a small portion of his uh, property that's bisected by a small section of road that purely exists on the maps and it's not, um, it doesn't really contribute to any traffic pattern. And so what Peter is asking the board to do as a citizen is to have that portion of the road abandoned. It doesn't affect any uh, traffic otherwise. There is a small access point on Roy Mann back to- Roy Zartman. Right, excuse me, Roy, forgive me, Roy Zartman. Um, property, but um, an easement could be created, and whether that could be done through a personal agreement or um, uh, via deed is something else that we'll leave up for further discussion. So the road is just a, a big, what Peter has described to all of us is just it's covered by grass, so you wouldn't even know it's there but for it existing on a map. Thank you. No. Okay. Next is the Tulpahawken police contracts. Uh, there is an addendum to this agreement, which expires on the 31st of December, 2021. Uh, we are waiting for Tulpahawken's attorney to review this. They, unless they, they, did. they did. Fantastic. Yeah, responses. Um, so um, Tulpahawkins have given us the quote for 2022 for the fee. And then I prepared a draft and they actually asked if we could renew for three years. And just like they were doing under the current agreement, they would provide a quote for the next year, no later than October 31st of each year, which is what the current terms of agreement would be. Um, and so basically all I did was revise the, the addendum so that renews it for three years and puts forth the fee for the for 2022. Um, and then it would be the same. So by October 31st of 2022, they would provide us with the quote for 2023. Historically, it's been about three to four percent of an increase. There is a cap of the increase that was already built into the contract of 10 percent from one year to the next, and that will not go away. So the addendum simply extends and then sets forth the uh, fee. Um, I I first sent that over for them and said we could adopt it tonight, approve it tonight for your signature, and then if they they approve it next month, it's done. Okay. Okay. Let's say I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve the addendum to the Tulpa Hawken police contract. 
Second. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. We'll, we'll get that before we lunch. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. You're welcome. Okay, next is the Eagle Disposal contract. Uh, our current contract is a three-year contract. Uh, Lee, did you have a question? Okay, sorry, I thought I saw your hand. Um, it's a three-year contract, which expires on March 21st, 2022, with an option to renew for one year and an option to renew for a second year, totaling five years. For years uh, one through three, residents pay qu a quarterly fee of $50.40 for trash, $16.80 for recycling, totaling $67.20. For year four, the quarterly fees are $52.65 for trash and $17.55 for recycling, totaling $70.20. And for year five, the quarterly fees are $54.90 for trash and $18.30 for recycling, totaling $73.20. Um, they have provided free trash and recycling totes. In the past, uh, our solicitor has drawn up uh, items to go out for request for bid. Carthy Engineering has posted them on PedBid. We would need to advertise this if we are interested in going forward with doing the request for proposal. Um, we had some discussion last month about enforcing some penalties for non-performance. I still think we should look into that. And Courtney, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the contract based on some of the complaints, but one of the, the principal complaints that I think you have, no matter what trash collection company is, people find things that are spilled or dropped. I think we see a, a very large number of that yeah. disproportionate. Um, okay. And the other big one is the fact that the recycling is, uh, the, the weights for the recycling are pretty much all the over top. the place and on the decline. Okay, so um, the we can we can look at the existing contract and you know we, when we we can set forth our complaints in a letter and send that over to them and exercise the remedies over there. It, what that's set forth in that contract, I have to review them and kind of advise you based off of those complaints because the I know the recycling was a concern that's we talked about in the past. The um, trash flowing everywhere, the new one that I'm hearing. Um, but we can we can definitely send a letter over to them. The request for bid we can we can get together um, relatively quickly. The only thing um, is that I, I recommend that you guys maybe reach out to the adjacent municipalities that did it more recently than you because mm. um, when I did a trash collection contract for the what is it called the collection of governments, mm -hmm. which is almost our office and then um, most of the um, trash haulers um, had informed us that they weren't able to collect the same recyclables that they used to because of changes in what, what recyclables were being purchased. So we would want to make sure that you guys know what, what you guys want to be in the request for bid before we send it out so that we, you guys actually know you're going to get submissions. Because I know, I know when they tried to do it before they adjusted it, nobody did on the contract. Okay. I think Womelstor, the last time that we had talked about trash, they were on a similar cycle for contract Womelstor, renewal. They're with the co they're the with COG. the coalition they're of, part of the COG. Yeah, yeah, they're part of the COG. But I, I think yeah, the, I did theirs. Um, but that was yeah, part of the COG. Um, and I know that Womelstor charges eighty nine dollars a quarter. Yeah, but yeah. well, I'm just saying I think they probably are on a similar cycle to us. So they're the, they actually so they actually are, but they. Um, they're very happy with waste management, so they actually extended theirs. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. they extended theirs. My point was, like, if we went to look at, like, the mobile store for anybody else in the coalition of governments, that their their data is probably going to be from around the same time as our data the last time they did a request for proposal. Yeah. Um, we, so, but I, I mean, I can see that they have. Yeah. Uh, but they had, and then again, you might want to, I think South Heidelberg might have done their more recently. Um, I think Fleetwood did theirs more recently. So it might be worth making some calls to see if we can send them over, um, just because I know that was an issue. But okay, Sue, so yeah. can we can we make a, a I'll say an action item to to reach out to some of the other neighboring municipalities and see where they're where they're at, how old their contract is, and what their costs are, and what they're what they're collecting really. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jim or Irene, do you have anything further? No, I know on, on our current contract, I know Sue. You had mentioned this before. The amount of residents the is incorrect on what we yeah, have. Yeah, but I looked at yeah. that again, and I actually underlined it. So it the way it reads in the contract, it says, although there are approximately four hundred fifty five dwelling units, blah blah blah, the township makes no warranty as to the number of dwelling units within the township, nor at any time in the future. 
So it's yeah. basically saying even if we give them a list for 455, if there's more yeah. and more coming, right? Yep. Yeah. But because we've had people complain that they haven't picked up the trash. Yeah. yeah. And so that's like an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. If, if, yeah. if somebody's putting trash out, their eagle is supposed yeah. to be the one that's invoicing yep. for that or getting them to yeah. to do that. That's not the, the impetus is not on us to make that right. a requirement or not, not right. make the requirement and enforce the requirement. Mm -hmm. so. It's just frustrating. Okay. Next item on the agenda is there are a series of terms expiring in January, 2022. These are reappointed at the reorganizational meeting. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been serving. The first position is Claire Zimmerman uh, on the planning commission who uh, is interested in serving another term. Nelson Troutman on zoning hearing, who is interested in serving another term. Nancy Carrington on the vacancy board, uh, who will serve another term. And John Selesky, uh, emergency management coordinator, who is interested in serving another term. Um, I don't know that we've had other interest from other people, but each one of these people are well versed in what, what their, their items are that they have to represent. Um, we'll talk more about it at the reorganizational meeting, but it is nice to see that we have interest from the community and that uh, there's a continued interest from those serving. So we currently have no vacancies. There are, I don't think there's, there are any vacancies now. Yeah. yeah. If memory serves me, Sue, I think we finally fo folded down that, re like the, the recreational committee. Like we had, I'd have to look at this. This is just me asking. I think there was a, a rec board thing. No, we don't have a record. Well, no, it wasn't like an actual record, but it was like Matt Barnhart and a couple other people that were on that. Oh, and that was historical. Historical. Thank yeah, you. Historical. Um, and that's, sort that's of, so if you look on here, it is um, all of the term, those terms expired. And that was, was the intent. I think that was, sort of yeah, I, was saying, I think last year was the last one. Mm -hmm. So technically yeah. speaking, we have no vacancies Correct. at this point. Okay. Okay. Next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendments. Uh, there's one for Robazonia Borough to designate uh, the convenience store with fuel pumps as a separate distinct use in town center, highway commercial, general industrial, and light industrial zoning districts. This does provide use specific regulations for parking, vehicular circulation around pumps, placement of ventilation equipment, setbacks for fuel pumps, maximum number of pumps, et cetera. Uh, the convenience stores and fuel pumps must be owned and operated by the same entity and no repairs can be conducted on site. Uh, to really sum this up, this is an update to a designation in there that would allow things like Wawa's and Turkey Hills to be placed, whereas the existing designation for that sort of thing is a service station. You'd have to have like a mechanics garage in order to sell fuel, which is kind of antiquated at this point. Um, for North Heidelberg, they're looking to change a, a little bit of their medium does uh, excuse me change it a little bit to medium residential um, zoning to have a minimum average lot size of 7,500 square feet um, we've not gotten any comments back from the Berks County Planning Commission however our planning commission has reviewed this and recommend that the Board of Supervisors accept the, the amendment condition upon the resolution of the Berks County Can Planning Commission we did make a motion to provisionally accept that based on the Berks County Planning Commission comments at the workshop meeting the next planning commission meeting is on Thursday, October, or excuse me, not well, October 23rd, 21st. That um, that's the November 30th meeting. Yeah, I um, that it's, it's okay. I should have known. Um, okay. That uh, Jim and I will be there, uh, Irene I'll possibly try. as well. Yeah. Uh, we have to have quorum there in order to be able to vote along the side of the other municipalities that are involved in that, that uh, joint agreement. Um, so you missed Heidelberg. I missed Heidelberg? Oh, jeez. Okay. That's Rob that Robinsonia Borough, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Robinsonia Borough. Okay. Um, the other one that was kind of slipped in there that I missed uh, was the Heidelberg Township. They're changing a parcel in their Ag Preserve District to medium de density residential. This parcel is 25 acres with an address of 620 William Penn Boulevard. It is located in both Marion Township, 14 acres, and Heidelberg Township, 11 acres. Uh, the portion that is in Marion is already zoned medium density residential, so they're they're actually aligning with our zoning. Um, our planning commission also reviewed this and recommended that we accept the amendment. A motion was made at the October Board of Supervisors meeting to accept this. If we don't have any follow-up questions or comments or concerns on that, we'll move to the next item, which is the rental inspection ordinance. Uh, this would allow rental properties, uh, allow access by craft codes to rental properties every other year, once every two years. 
uh, to ensure a baseline level of safety for people that are occupying um, apartments and, and homes that are being rented out for profit. Um, we have a, a number of ordinances. We have actually I have a, a pretty decent handful of them. We, we need to go through, look through, and uh, essentially find out what is the best fit for Marion mm -hmm. Township, uh, so that we can hopefully give people a, a tool for help should they need it beyond just what we have within the, the property management. Um, I personally have not had a chance to sit down and do a side by side with the five or six yeah. ordinances at I'm this time. I'm going to try to do that and like yeah. make a nice amalgam of similar what we did with the noise ordinance and just pass that along and you know highlight points. You know, would you want to consider this? Would you want not want to consider this? Because there's good points in, in most mm -hmm. of them, and most were, were fairly similar. I think I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, the goal is of course to be helpful. Give mm -hmm. give us a tool to help people, not anything yep. that's going to be overly burdensome. So we want to make sure that we get that tailored. We're not in a, a super big rush to do it, but no. we want to make sure that we have that tailored to yeah. be the best fit that it can be. Okay, next is the winter snow removal. The salt spreaders are on the trucks. The snow plows need to be put on. We should be doing that on the 4th of December. We've set up a, essentially a road crew meeting. Um, Tony Brubaker and Dave Stabby will also help plow, plow the snows uh, during big storms. Um, and uh, we're going to be putting a, a, a line out email to anybody that uses email, phone calls to anybody who doesn't uh, about being here on the December 4th meeting so that we can get the trucks ready, go over who, really what the best routes are for plowing, where the turnarounds are that people should be using, and just making sure that we're, we're well coordinated into this year in case we get inclement weather. Um, John is well <laughs> to, to attend. I, yeah, I don't I'll know if he's been know. called or emailed yet, but he's certainly welcome to be there. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a list of children that street again in front of my place. Like I have for the last few years. <laughs> Every snowstorm, I got to clear. I'll tell you, I got to clear down in the cab. Okay. It's, it's good exercise for my crying training. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next uh, part of truck readiness is uh, we need to put two truck tires on the little truck. Uh, we had done two last year, but we've hit a point where the, the other two that we didn't replace are kind of in need for it now. Uh, we did get several quotes. I believe, Butch, you were kind enough to, to get those. Uh, Kepley's tire quoted 254 per tire for a couple of Kumho's, including mounting and balancing and a state tire fee. Um, we're pretty sure this includes the disposal of the tires, but it wasn't specifically noted. Uh, oh, it does? Awesome. Okay. Thank you. I didn't see it on there, but thank you. Uh, totaling $516 for the, the whole thing. The next quote is Binkley and Hearst for $259.24 per tire, which are Roadmasters, uh, plus the mounting, $100, and disposal of the old tires, $40, which comes to a total of $658.48. Uh, they also gave some other comparative things for Cooper tires and Firestones and things like that. Uh, Custom Exhaust Shop also quoted tires at $363 per tire, uh, $726 for the pair, plus mounting of $70, disposal of the old tires for $16. Uh, ballast stem fee of $10 and uh, tech plus beads of 2306 and some state tire fees coming to $845.06. So out of the quotes, the Kepley Tire Center quote is the cheapest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I personally like keeping business in the area if we can, whenever Absolutely. we can. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to authorize Butch to take the little truck over to Kepley's Tire Center and get the tires installed for a total of uh, $516. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next up is the building maintenance. Uh, we've kind of put a little bit of a hiatus on this as we were, we're trying to assemble numbers for really everything that we would need to do versus want to do, and then compare that against the cost of a, a new location. Um, I know, Irene, you had yeah. been trying to reach out and get yeah, quotes, I, and it's I've just not been easy. I just kind of put a, a hold on it, and I think I'm probably not going to resume calling until after the first of the year. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get much. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, next is the PSATS life insurance plan. Uh, PSATS is offering a new life insurance plan, uh, effective on the 2nd of November, offering $25,000 term life insurance. Currently, we're only enrolled in disability insurance. Uh, Jim, I believe you were going to look into this, but again, it's it's not a super urgent I, item. I have called them twice and haven't received a phone call back. That's okay. okay. Is but there any interest? I think anyone? it's I think it's a term policy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I, was I, was say, I know. There's no interest. I know. Yeah. I don't. I don't need it. Yeah. But, no. So if I mean, if they call you back, get get information. But I I wouldn't I wouldn't yeah, dwell on it. I mean, the concern I had is is it guaranteed issue? That's the only reason. Yeah. 
Okay, next is the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, we received $100,848.79, which was transferred into the general money market account. Uh, the U.S. Treasury has not issued their final rules yet. However, the deadline for the annual report was moved from October 31st, 2021 to April 30th, 2022. Now, Irene, I think you've been, you and Sue have probably been keeping the closest yep. watch on yep. this. And PSAP's put out a new fact sheet, but there's really not much new on it. Yeah, okay. there's not much. They're still waiting for final rules. Yeah. And uh, if memory serves, we have, we have until like 2024 to determine a plan of what we want to do. And then 2026 to, to actually yes. use it. So, so I'm assuming we'll be receiving the funds again. What month? I, forget. I can't even remember what month we received it. I want to say that was like June, June, June or July. So, so we'll probably yeah. get the same amount. I'm, I'm thinking the same time of year. So yeah, it's just figuring out what to do with it. And if we do nothing, then the report's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So yep. yep. One of the usual, things that we usual could, everything takes forever. Yeah. And yeah. So unfortunately that, that sort of stuff Next moves slowly. My wife asked me to do something and then tell her I'm waiting for state and federal approval. Yeah. You just tell, <laughs> just tell her that you're waiting for a GP7 permit. Yeah. Um, okay. Next is the credit cards and the credit card policy. Uh, you had sent over a draft, which I think was was quite good. There were a couple little things that I think we need to maybe tweak tweak a Definitely. little bit, but otherwise it was yeah. pretty comprehensive. And uh, the intent for the credit cards is to allow us to do things that we were we're normally having to do out of pocket and get reimbursed oh, yeah. for. Uh, one of the insurance policies works that way. You you can't pay it by any other means other than by credit card. Yeah. So. This gives us a tool that we can use for that, uh, as well as setting up recurring payments with Comcast, which we were unable to do in the past. Um, things like that, that are pretty much fixed cost every month. Um, Buying eight rolls of stamps at the post office. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the, the kind of the unintended yeah. benefit is we won't have to mail quite as many things back, but um, I don't think we have a, a substantial update on the policy other than just the, the first draft is getting reviewed. Um, next is the payment of engineer and attorney fees. Uh, this is for review of stormwater plans and other things of that nature. Currently, we are sending a letter and an invoice out. A second invoice includes a 6% increase. Uh, this process should be maybe tweaked or adjusted as we, we start to go through it. Um, how many invoices we send before we turn over to collections, things of that nature. Um, we can send bills for work performed within the past three years. That was determined uh, from input with the solicitor's office. Uh, and we can hold a permit if bills are not paid. Uh, Alicia at Kozlov Stout will be helping to beef up the letter to ensure that it, it has Alicia. the best Alicia, Alicia, I'm sorry. Well, the, no. She'll just get invited two years. Uh, I, I, I apologize, yeah. Alicia, if uh, you Alicia's see this. The, the paralegal yep. that worked closely with Andy, and she she did confirm, you know, she has a collection procedure, and then if, if amounts were made, yep. we can let the lien go on the yep. So just to uh, update, so we did in fact forward the information to Alicia, and uh, uh, she's like, we're going to put a lien on this person's property, period, end of the statement, nothing nothing further. I was I was shocked because I thought it would mean just a letter from Kozlov Stout to this individual. But she's like, no, we're putting a lien. I'm like, okay. She's, she knows her procedure. Yep. And you yep. guys have probably had yep. long enough that you can. So, so. Yep. So I guess uh, from, from the board standpoint, because in another two days, I'm going to be sending out more <laughs> letters uh, with respect to people that are coming from that that third letter time frame. So just to go over with everyone here, we want to do letter one, letter two, letter three. Alicia's going to help me beef up what we have to say in the letter. But after that, uh, do you guys have any problem if we turn over to Kozlov Stout to handle it any further? The one point that I would want clarified pretty distinctly yeah. is the required time between each one of the letters. It's been 30 days. Okay, and that's that's and actually, perfect. Right, but it, it's been a little bit more because I'm not always in the office, yeah. but give me 30 days. So actually, between for the most part letters one and two has almost been like one and a half months almost two months and then it, so it's it's not a fixed 30 days well, and, that, and that's yeah. fine i just wanted to understand yeah. that we're not like sending a letter on monday sending another letter no. on friday it's, no. we're... but sometimes we are because there's multiple bills that come in that are different invoices and in different amounts yeah. yes but what yeah. i'm saying is like we're not yes. sending no. letters one two and three of, no. of no. seeking one particular bill back no. within a short time no. frame we're trying it's, to give people an, an ample amount of yeah. time to to yeah. to do what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I mean, I'd be content if, if someone, even after I've sent the, the third letter, if someone says, oh, I can pay it. And if they give us the amount for the original amount, I'd be content with that. But yeah. um, but are you guys okay? The policy will be letter one, two, and three, 30 day time frame in between that. If we don't get any payment, I'm sent for the, the information over to Alicia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it's... so we'll, we'll, I'll write another policy and hopefully we're gonna come up with 
procedures and policies that both that apply for us, how we handle just, I, I don't wanna say clerical items, but um, more so procedural issues that come up within the office so that we don't have to rewrite, reinvent the wheel every single time along with uh, down the road, I'm gonna try to put together an employee manual mm -hmm. so that we, there's a clear understanding of what activities and how they should be done. So I, I agree that yeah. any, any of the processes that we're yeah, building, just, we should be yeah. documenting so that whether it's me or you or anybody else, yep. that it's r routine and repeatable. So okay. as we start to move through that, we'll, we'll make sure yeah. we get that kind of codified. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, just as a, a side note to that, you've sent out a bunch of letters. We've actually had a fairly had, respectable yeah. response yeah. on that, yeah. that a lot of people, people have, pay. have paid. Yeah. But there's, um, aside from that other individual, there's three other individuals who have not paid. And again, it, it adds up, uh, and there's no reason that the taxpayer should be having to pay for work done on other individuals' properties. Mm -hmm. And that's that, so. Okay. Next up is the saldo, uh, the fees and uh, the, ord the ordinance and fees for the stormwater management. Uh, the subdivision and land development ordinance, the saldo is from 1991 and the fees are from 2005. The stormwater management ordinance and fees are both from 2002. Uh, Jim McCarthy was kind enough to send us a copy of Why Missing's fee schedule, which contains a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> so we need to, to go through, and it's just a, a labor of time uh, and just effort on that to go through and see what we have a direct match for currently, uh, what we are not necessarily billing for, but we should be, um, and things that we, we may have on ours. I, I doubt this is the, the biggest of the, the chunk. We may not even have any, but we may be charging for things that aren't valid anymore they're just not used but they're continuing to be on our fee schedule yeah so we basically got to, to go through and, and update that and level set nice it with excel sheet yeah. yeah yeah it was it was a very large excel sheet. it was, it was a very, very nice excel, excel sheet, sheet. But it was very large i tried um, yeah. so we just have to go through that and yeah. uh honestly speaking the reorganizational meeting probably isn't the best time to do it but no. sometime early next year would be the best time to do kind of an exercise yeah. on taking a workshop or uh, some time workshop. on a thursday night meeting yeah to go through that line by line and make sure that we have a, a comprehensive uh, updated fee schedule sometime from this decade. Okay, next is the 2022 proposed budget. This was accepted at the October Board of Supervisors meeting and advertised on November 10th. It is available for public inspection. Uh, we were unfortunately one day short for the 20 day advertising window uh, that we would need. Uh, just by the nature of how our meetings fell in October into November. So we will need to adopt this at the December 30th, uh, 2021 meeting. At that meeting by resolution, we will adopt the 2.0 millage and the uh, 65 cent street light millage and the $50 pump out inspection fee. Uh, at this time, we don't have any additional actions that we have to take on that until the next meeting. Next is the County of Berks Municipal Tax Sheet. Uh, we share printing costs and postage costs with the county for the tax bills. The municipal tax sheet and contact information needs to be completed and sent back by no later than December 31st, 2021. Uh, we will be adding to the $50 pump out inspection fee for the affected parcels uh, and providing a list. A motion was made at the workshop meeting to authorize the adding of that pump out fee to the municipal tax sheet. Next is the purchase of street signs. We made a motion at the workshop meeting for a total cost of $790 to buy some additional street signs, uh, 25 mile per hour, since we're basically out of those. I don't think we have any in the shop, uh, along with some other signs like pedestrian crossing, uh, a little ahead signs that go ahead, uh, alongside of that to hopefully in very strategic areas, place those to help cut down on, on speeding or just general safety. Um, <coughs> Uh, the next item is the Main Street, <laughs> uh, Main Street Traffic Study. Uh, we received a proposal from Traffic Planning and Design Incorporated to in, uh, do a, perform a study on Main Street. It was $2,500 per intersection. They had originally specced out four intersections. I think we really only need to do the three. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to authorize uh, Traffic Planning and Design to do that study for the three intersections uh, on Main Street. And I'll, I'll spell those out when we send it back for uh, Church and Main water in Maine and Sharp in Maine. Uh, but I'd like to authorize them to move forward with those three intersections for the traffic study for stop signs. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is the accounting services. Uh, I'll actually turn it over to Irene since you yeah, had the most interaction you. with her. Yeah, no, thank you. And Sue, thank you again for reminding me it was an agenda item. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, Rick uh, came down 
and helped out with uh, some of the issues that were created by our prior cleanup. And then after the auditors um, made some adjustments. So I, it's, it's way beyond what I understand with the program and in order to keep everything in line with best accounting practices, I need Rick to fix it. So um, he thought less than 10 hours, what I said, up to five and he's charges $45 an hour, but because it, it exceeded what we had previously budgeted, I need to come back to ask for it in, in a motion. Okay, so, do you wanna make a motion? Sure, I'd like to make a motion to authorize Rick Will to perform additional work uh, from anywhere from five to 10 hours at the rate of $45 an hour. I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Yeah. Some of the other housekeeping issues that we were talking about with the program during the workshop. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, uh, been taken care of. I don't know if you want me just to. Some of the stuff is just he showed me other things to do with the program. Oh yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If there's if there's new things that I'm not aware of, I'd love to. It's just it's just tracking more data. Um, so we're able to assign different chart of accounts for certain information. That's just something from a housekeeping perspective. I don't know if you think uh, it'll help out with, with uh, tracking budget it, information it down the road. Okay. Absolutely. absolutely well. So then maybe I'll, I'll have you come and help me <laughs> with going over some, some things and we could just recategorize with the section of numbers, but because of the other information that he showed me, we're able to split out essentially what we act as a pass through with both respect with engineering and uh, legal costs for, for work that residents are done. Mm -hmm. So now we're able to track that information differently, but we could track it through a chart of accounts as well. And when it comes to the data and it'll, it'll impact the budget, but it, the, the total number is still there. It's just money that we should be receiving in at this point from it. Yeah, so, it'll, it'll give us better clarity yeah. on what things are being paid on the township's yeah. benefit and what things are being paid at individual residents' benefits. Yeah, yeah. So it's just more of, of a housekeeping issue when it comes to the program. Okay. Uh, next is the Aikens Accounting Engagement Letter. We received the uh, letter from the auditing firm uh, for the 2021 audit. Uh, because of the things that we've done this past year, I think we're, we're in great shape for that. Oh yeah, and, uh, definitely. And should, should be pretty much ready to go at a moment's notice for them. Absolutely. Okay. Do you wanna make a motion to sign it? Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, I read you one. I'd like to make a motion to uh, sign the engagement letter as received from Aikens Accounting to have them perform the 2021 audit. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. They, they were, they've been wonderful to work with throughout the year. I'm able to send them emails. They, they give us answers. They were extremely, extremely thorough and gave us pointers to, again, move forward into the, to the next year. And so I'm hoping this year it, I thought it was a smooth process mm -hmm. last year, but not having done it before, I'm hoping this year it's just going to be click of the button, produce the reports, everything's going to be in the file boxes, and I'm really hoping there's really not much. And again, thanks to Sue and, and Dan for being here last year when I couldn't, So, but I've already taken care of that issue. So, Okay. Next on the agenda is the Dutch Valley Food Distributors. Uh, we received a revised uh, final land development plan to extend their warehouse. Uh, they requested a waiver of section 4.31 of our sow bill. Uh, the plan scale requirement of one inch equals 50 feet, if you had a chance to look at that. The request modification waiver of uh, 5.21912 of our sow bill, which is a 100 foot clear uh, line of sight triangles. Our planning commission has reviewed this and recommend that the board of supervisors grant these waivers. Um, Memory serves me. These are pretty standard. They come up a lot for, for waiver requests. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, no, no, that's uh, okay. yeah. The only the, normal the clear sight triangle is it's it's a waiver of our requirement, but what they do meet is PennDOT's requirement okay. for clear sight distance. So it's not a safety issue. We're not waiving any kind of a safety issue. So okay, thank you for that <clears throat> clarification. By the way, um, I'll make a motion to grant the waiver request from Dutch Valley. There's two. Uh, uh, okay. There's two. Should, do you want me to do them one at a time or both it's at the same time? Okay. I'll Just make a motion. Sure say to okay. okay. I'll make a motion to grant uh, both requests by Dutch Valley food distributors uh, for waivers for their warehouse. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. 
Okay, next is the Patrick subdivision. Plans were submitted to subdivide a six acre property, six, or actually six plus, excuse me, six plus acre property into three lots located on Jonathan Drive. There are two existing homes on this property. Lot number three is proposed as a single family residence. It is in Jackson Township. Uh, there appears to be a shared driveway for the four existing houses and one proposed house. Mr. Patrick has submitted a request uh, for deferral from review. Our planning commission recommends that the board deny the request. A little explanation on that one. Yeah, if you have it, please. <clears throat> um, half the property is in Jackson Township. Half the property is in Marion Township. But the whole property is taxed in Berks County, Marion Township. So it's, it's odd. It's very yeah. odd. Okay. Do you, do you if, 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 you, if it's too confusing, we can look at a plan. But basically yeah. what it amounts to is I don't want to, I don't want, I don't think we can defer it because if it's taxed in, and, and recorded in Berks County, the only way they can do a subdivision that I'm aware of is if they get the review done in Berks County. I don't think we can get Jack, uh, Lebanon County and Jackson Township to do the entire review and then report it in Berks County. <laughs> and then in theory, you can do the holding is separate, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Yeah, it's the main reason it's probably taxed here is it tends to be where the driveway is. Um, but if it's if you have half the property there and there's a shared driveway, and ultimately <clears> the planning <throat> commission recommends denying it, there, there are good bad pieces to rely upon. <laughs> I, I trust in our planning commission, so I'll make a motion to deny the uh, Patrick subdivision request for deferral. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next up on the agenda is uh, additional road crew. Uh, Ryan Allgaier has a CDL and has expressed an interest in helping plow snow during the big storms. I, I welcome the help especially someone with a CDL and his experience in driving a truck like that. So I'd like to make a motion to add Ryan Allgaier to the road crew. Second. Roll call, Peter. I, uh, aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. I'll let him know. Okay. Uh, when, when you talk to him, extend the uh, December 4th as well. Thank you. Um, next is the audiovisual equipment. Uh, actually found a, a really good price on very large displays. Um, actually have it up here. It's uh, $448 for a 70 inch uh, flat screen TV. Uh, what I'd like to do is get one or two of them. That way we can put things that we're looking at, whether it's plans, agendas, financial reports, et cetera, uh, in large on the wall behind us. Uh, we do have those, those two, the we, I, I can, I can make sure yeah. that we have enough yeah. outlets. That's not a huge deal, but, um, the goal here is to have that up. And we have those two projectors that I had picked up on the cheap. Um, when we uh, resurface this wall, because the wall itself is not conducive to any sort of projected, you just lose clarity on it. And the, the overhead lights are yep. too bright and the way the switches are, we unfortunately can't turn off the front half of the room and keep mm -hmm. the back half lit. Um, we'll, we'll have a use for them for sure, but we might have to do some additional work on the wall. Mm -hmm. Whereas the TVs would be an, an almost instant thing if you get yeah. brackets, hang them, and start using them the following meeting. Yeah, and so we want to get these things up here so that any numbers, anything that maps, we could just, Peter just clicks the button and everyone can see what we're looking at. So it makes it a lot more interactive and everyone's on literally on the same page. Yeah, and we did so, kind of that same sort of thing virtually yeah. with when we were doing yeah. meetings remotely with yeah. COVID. It was awesome. Just share yeah. share information while we were doing the, the Zoom session. So it, we'd like to try to emulate some of that in person. Um, and I know we have technology budget budgeted in. Yeah. Um, would we want to get one or would we want to get two screens? What do you think? No. Get two. I, I would say get two. two. Okay. Yeah, this sound, uh, again, not being tech savvy, can you control yeah. differently? You, what's on you each? absolutely oh, can. Let's go for it. Yeah. Two. Okay. Can put those nice <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can give you the link if you're interested. Um, Walmart. Yeah, it's it's a uh, hunted around and found a good. Ah, okay. Um, that was the cheapest I could find. But anyway, the uh, if if you're interested, uh, I'll ask one of you to make a motion authorizing me to do that, and I'll I'll pick them up. So, no, are we even on motions tonight? I mean, you can do rock paper scissors. 
Sorry. I'd like to make well, a motion. The goal here and the reason that you have too is if we actually had somebody on the Zoom session, we'd be able to put them up and still have an agenda. And on, under the normal meetings, we'd have things like we could have the agenda up or the financial reports and then still put a map up or other things. So it's really, if you have screen space, you'll find a very good use oh, for yeah. it. Yeah. Like, tr trust me on that, whether it's whether it's displays or your computer screens, if, if you have a situation, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you're a heavy computer user or not, Mervin, but if you if you go from one screen to two screens, it's it's life changing. There's no it going is, back. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, used, I used to be a one screen person. Yeah. Now I'd like three or four, but yeah, it, it makes a big difference. So I'd like to make a motion to authorize Peter to purchase two 70 inch TV sets from Walmart at the price of $448. In addition, tax that's included with that, as well as wall mounting equipment and other necessary wiring. Um, you missed the word each. Each. Thank you. What's it two? Yeah, but you didn't. Oh, you four hundred forty-eight dollars each. Sorry. <laughs> Second. Let's try to include everything in it. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Yeah, the uh, the brackets I'll hunt around, but most of them have found are like forty dollars or less, yeah. um, and it should be pretty easy because that's a concrete wall. We can put anchors in. Pretty, yeah, pretty straightforward. So I'll get them ordered, and hopefully, maybe for the December meeting, we'll have them up and. Oh, that'd be and, so awesome! Yeah. We could put the budget up there. We could put so much stuff up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's December is going to be a, a pretty action-packed meeting, so it's yeah. it's going to be used. Okay, uh, that's the last item on the agenda. Um, we have not received the police report for Culpahawken Township yet, so we'll we'll go over that at the December meeting. It's because our um, meetings are on. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, and uh, I do actually want to follow up with the Tulpa, or not Culpahawken, the uh, state police about that police report that was, excuse me, mentioned earlier to get that because I've not seen that at all, and they usually are pretty good about sending things to that either to the office or to me. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, the only thing is that the MTCA is selling sandwich coupons. Um, yeah, Kelly. Yeah. Kelly, I need to either bring you a check or bring you cash or something because yeah. I, I have my wallet, but I don't have any money on me. Um, oh, how many tickets do you want? I was going to get like five. Okay. Um, but anyway, the MTCA is selling sandwich coupons. It's for a good cause. They're $6.50 each, and the sandwiches are really good as a bonus. Um, that's really all I have in terms of comments. Uh, Irene, do you have any comments? Um, I guess just one comment. You know, I mean... Nelson said one size doesn't fit all in the township. And I'd like to say that's a very true statement, but unfortunately we all have to comply with the law and we're all trying to figure out what to do. And we're trying to make the situation the best for everyone. Nothing that we do is geared towards any one individual here or residents or, or business, whatever. And I think that's a lot of what we wrestle with when we're up here and we're having a discussion we're, we're trying to say, what can we do that causes the least, I don't want to say harm, but the least impact on someone when we know it's going to have some negative consequences towards some individuals and some positive towards others. So, you know, I think that's a large part of what we take away and we all try to do our, our research and we all try to bring it back to these meetings and have a discussion over what's the best to do. I don't think any of us are ever in a rush to, to push through anything except for the good deal on the TVs. But, um, you know, other than that, it, I, I think that's the only comment I have to say, you know, we're just trying to do the best for everyone, but we have to comply with the law. We, we can't skirt around it. We can't avoid it. We have to do what's best for everyone with the tools that we've been given, so. I am very concerned about when they start doing inspections. Yeah. that a lot of the systems are not going to pass. Yeah. It's, and there's going to be a lot of people coming yeah. to these meetings very angry. Yeah, it's, because I, some of these systems are ancient. So. Right. It, but it, like in that same breath, though, it, it, you want to be able to do what you want on your property, but you also have a responsibility to your neighbor. You also have a responsibility to, to the people in your town, in your community at large. So... If I'm not being a good neighbor, it's definitely going to impact you. It's going to decrease the value of your home. If my sewage is spilling onto your property, that's not a cool thing. So yeah, and I, I'm I hoping agree. I just feel bad for the people who don't pass and are going to get hit with huge bills. Oh yeah. Well, and the yard you're only so big. That's right. You know, now you're going to try to stick it all the time. <laughs>
Well, there's yeah. holding tanks and there's other options and, and we know that and, and you know, and sometimes you purchase a property, sometimes you live at a property and you're not aware of all, all the situations, but the, again, there's pluses and minuses of home ownership. I, I've had new properties. I, I built a house within two years, my entire septic system backed up into my entire basement. What we found out after the fact was it was installed incorrectly. I had to pay for it out of pocket. Was I happy about it? No. Did I remedy it? Yes. Do I have the benefits of having a beautiful piece of property and being able to essentially do with it what I choose to do with it? But I have to comply with the law still. Well, I so, know my neighbor went to sell her house and they came to do an inspection and old guy had put a plastic tank in the ground. Mm -hmm. They said they said to him, Right, exactly. You've got to tear that up, put a new tank yep. and everything else in it. And we, that's all of it, her tank. I think that's what people forget. Be a good neighbor. Be a good citizen. Be kind to others. And, and I, I'm tired of people yelling and shouting. Just be kind. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. You know, just take a step back and say, you know, what would it be if that was my situation? Yeah. And the thing is, with, with Duxford, I mean, if they're going to go through and do these inspections and have to do something, holding tanks or whatever, what's going to happen a couple years down the road and they say, we're going to put storm in that. So there's there's actually this was a, a concern that has been universally voiced. I feel um, if it's a situation where it's absolutely unremediated, uh, unable to be remediated, probably the best way to say that, you would have a situation where you'd have to put a holding tank or something in there. Uh, the reality is the prior plan was put through, and it's we're, we're essentially on the books for a public sewer. Um, if we find with the income study that it's absolutely wildly unaffordable, that's something that we may have to push on because it may be more cost effective for people to be on alternative or different systems. Um, coupled with when we actually have to uh, start having real data from the pump outs, we may find that there's a pleasant surprise. Most of the systems are in good shape. We may not. Those two things are gonna paint a very real picture of need and affordability. If we have a distinct need and people in Stouchburg, I know along the village have been very vocal about, uh, we don't need the sewer. This is an, an ample opportunity to prove whether there's need or not. Um, if you have situations where there's maybe a not ideal situation, it's not working the best. One of the things in uh, the Act 537 and some of the other supporting regulation is uh, the, the SEO can get a system working to best technical guidance standards, which may not be the ideal necessarily, but it's still passable and functional. I'm hoping that a lot of people that have a, a bad system, and this isn't saying people that are dumping directly into a hole in the ground or something like that, but people that have a system that maybe isn't, isn't the best, we don't have a situation where they have to rip it out by the roots and replace it at a, a, an obscene cost just because we do have that, that looming um, requirement of the sewer that was pushed through from prior board members. It's my goal, our goal to make this as affordable as possible for everybody if we have to do it. And if it's a situation where it's absolutely unaffordable or we, we have a, a properly scientifically documented demonstration of a lack of need, that we take the appropriate actions to protect people from having to, to spend gobs of money for something that isn't going to derive any real benefit for it. So we're trying. Yeah. We're. Scout's honor. We're doing the, doing the best we can with what we what we have. Jim, do you have any other comments? Oh, the other thing is, I think first of the year we need to look at all of our ordinances and do some updates. And... Are you volunteering, Jim? There's a nice big book. <laughs> <laughs> There's a nice big book, and and, and I'll yeah. some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are yeah. outdated. Yeah. They need revised. Yeah. Procedures need yeah. changed. Fees need changed. Yep. There's fees yep. involved. Absolutely. This so. summer. Um, with Sue's blessing, we're going to try to have Josh come in and start scanning Scan. those things so that they're in the um, uh, on online. Yes, yeah, so we can put them up on the website. Yeah. And so um, I think that'll be a good opportunity to to take a look at it one by one. As we're finding yeah. out, like tonight, some of the fee schedules haven't been oh, yeah. updated yeah. since two thousand. Yeah. yeah, and it's, six or whatever, or it's one of those things that you just kind of lose sight of. Right. Uh, not even just us, other other board right. members and things like that in the past, but. Once we, we start going through, we just have to start cataloging. And then just right. every like five years or so, we, right. we look at these. Right. And, and now with things being available on a computer, I've created that Excel spreadsheet. You're just going to do his magic and make it look nicer. And every year we could take a look at the fees, like, because now it'll be on a spreadsheet in front of us. We could put it up on the screen. And so everyone can take a look at it and say, 
you know, this is where we're at and, and what should we update? And then it becomes routine maintenance at, mm -hmm. let's say a February meeting or a March meeting, let's review the, the, the schedule. And hopefully people just stay on track with that. Yeah, I mean, the biggest the biggest hurdle on that is getting into the routine because yeah. right now it's, it's pretty much all of them that could use a touch point on. After we go through them, it's going to become less and less and less cumbersome and it's going to be, okay, we're looking at these these six this year. We're looking at these six the next year. Mm -hmm. So it's just getting over that initial hurdle mm -hmm. of, of the review. And honestly, the best time to do that is when you're doing something like digitizing them yep. so that you can put them up on the website. Yep. So hopefully this summer, We'll be able to go through the ordinances. Actually, you know, once once school's out, we can get to abuse him and get him to do things on the computer. We don't want to lose money on things if we no. don't want to. We don't want we don't want to see we don't costs. Want to overcharge or yeah. undercharge fees, and so yeah, oh, yeah. we want to make sure that it's appropriate. And we one of the other things we're doing is we want to make sure that things for individual people are being billed for individual people yeah. and not being picked up by ta taxpayer yeah. expense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Courtney, do you have any comments? Um, and he's back doing well, and this may be my last meeting with you guys. So he might be here in December, it's, which is great for him. It's, it's, it's yeah. always nice to see you, but it'll be nice to see It'll Andy nice up and around. See him. He does look a bit thinner. Uh, he's thin to begin with. <laughs> I know. Uh, but he's looking good and he's, he's feeling good. So um, I'm still on hold in case he realizes, like, halfway through the month that maybe being out till my DM is not the best idea. Um, but I think this is my last meeting with you guys. You're, you're always welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So, I think I'm living. <laughs> 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 but thank you guys um, and I'm just happy to report that he's, he's doing much better yeah, thank you so Craig. I'm really happy about that uh, I don't really have anything but I, uh, no, unless you have uh, any questions about the uh, engineer's report no. everything I have thank is in there yeah, thank you okay. hope you all have a nice Thanksgiving thank you, you too Craig the only thing I have is, is thank you to Kelly, Josh and Irene for helping me do the mailing Oh, thank, yes. you. Thank, thank you, Kelly. Oh, thank you, Kelly. And your grandchildren. <laughs> okay, and say, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And I believe Butch actually wanted to say uh, something. Uh, Should be. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. you, you, get, you get the vehicle. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so <laughs> I think they were saying week after Thanksgiving was the tentative uh, date for that. Uh, I, I think it's yeah. Okay. So we. Okay, week of Thanksgiving. That's yeah. even better. Okay. Let's say if we have nothing else at this time, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 9 10 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned.